Dudley Brown is the founder and president of Rocky Mountain Gun Owners and the president of the National Association for Gun Rights, both based in Loveland, Colorado. Ben Gates is a previous guest and longtime friend, president of NG Companies, and CFO and partner in Connect Research Group, a firearm manufacturing business based in Idaho that specializes in stocks for competitive long-distance shooting. After a short career in politics after college, Dudley launched RMGO in 1996 by sending out a mailer on a shoestring budget, and the rest was history. Dudley invites us behind the curtain of building an advocacy organization, along with expanding the mission to a national scope with NAGR and especially what needs those organizations fulfill. Ben shared his career journey in Episode 6 of the podcast, alongside CEO and founder of NG Companies, and in this episode we zoom in on Ben's experience with shooting sports, starting in high school shooting with his buddy's father, and his transition into becoming a partner and CFO of Connect Research. There's lots of politically incorrect conversation in this one, and plenty of unvarnished truth about the way things work in state and national politics, and why the NRA is a bunch of hosers. Dudley's a fascinating figure on a national level, and he's based right here in northern Colorado. So if you're curious why we need more guns for a safer America, you've come to the right place. And I hope you'll tune in to my conversation with Dudley Brown and Ben Gates. Let's have some fun. Welcome to the Loco Experience Podcast. On this show, you'll get to know business and community leaders from all around northern Colorado and beyond. Our guests share their stories, business stories, life stories, stories of triumph and of tragedy, and through it all, you'll be inspired and entertained. These conversations are real and raw, and no topics are off limits. So pop in a breath mint and get ready to meet our latest guest. Welcome back to the Loco Experience. This is your host, Kurt Baer, and I am pleased today to be joined by Dudley Brown and Ben Gates. And hey hey. Uh, hey, hey, welcome, fellas. Glug, glug. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> and this is the bourbon tasting episode. And so we'll give some commentary. The tailor is fine. Very it's fine. Bourbon and guns. Bourbon and guns today. So um, Dudley is the president of Rocky Mountain Gun Owners, as well as the president of National Association for Gun Rights. And Ben is a longtime colleague of mine from my banking years, now president of NG Companies. And a partner in KRG, Kinetic Research Group. Yep. Gun manufacturing. We made it out. So uh, making America safer by arming our freedoms. Yeah. There you go. It's true. So yep. um, can we start with you, Dudley, and just like describe both of your organizations. Tell me, you know, if you have staff, <laughs> how many members. I know one state, one's kind of more of a national. Uh, but give us some groundwork for those that are uninitiated. Yeah, I'm... I'm my elevator speech, like who, who NAGR or mm-hmm. RMGO, the two gun rights lobbies are, and they're nonprofits, 501c4s. Okay. Uh, but my elevator speech is, we do what you think the NRA does. They don't <laughs> yep. actually do that. Um, we do that. Uh, so um, we're, we're uh, Rocky Mountain Gun Owners has been around uh, since 1996. Uh, NAGR, uh, I took over as the CEO of the what then was a just a piece of paper, a paper kind of tiger, a, a flailing, or a, it never I, what, really had barely much. even existed. I see. Um, so made an imagination of a national association for gun rights. Yeah, and um, because we were so frustrated with the compromises and the capitulation of the NRA, yeah. and uh, um, I took over it in two thousand six. Okay. Um, and was asked to to lead it, and now NAGR is the second largest gun rights group in America. Um, first, if you don't count the NRA as a gun rights group, <laughs> which I don't, um, but um, we're based in in Loveland, our main headquarters. But okay. of course, like most people, we've had to learn how to do uh, remote offices. Uh, we've mm. had to for ever since our existence because you're operating in state legislatures around the country mm. and we have staff all You've over. You've got people on the ground kind of thing. Yeah, you know, we have a D.C. office. But um, we have about, right now, I think we have about 65, close to 70 oh. staff. And, and um, is it mixed? Are they two separated in terms of the staffing? No, NHR staff, is or? the majority of the staff. We have yeah. we have two staff members for RMGO gotcha. here in the state. More administrative kind of things and local events and whatever, but right. the big horsepower goes to the Nagar. Well, they are, this, they are two separate legal entities. Fair. So is the we best way to describe them. 
Cool. And, you know, and we, we work in politics, um, but we work on the Second Amendment issues. And, of course, to work on Second Amendment issues, you have to use the First Amendment. <laughs> Fair. Um, mm. So it, whenever I'm interviewed by a member of the press and they say, gee, why, why aren't you in favor of these Brady background checks for someone who buys a gun? I'm a, well, I'm opposed to not only that on the Second Amendment, but I'm opposed to it on the First Amendment. I don't think you should ask to have government permission before I talk into this microphone, before you publish it, before you write something. I mean, wouldn't you be upset if someone did that? Well, if, if they required that before you publish this podcast, um, you know, the reporters look at you like, uh, <laughs> right. well, yeah. Well, but you might say something dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> right. and, and they say they have that look on their face like, gosh, um, are you really? Well, of course, but this, these are different. And I'm like, no, they're not. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they're one right after the other. They're the two, two civil rights guaranteed in the Bill of Rights and only, and frankly, recognized as rights by God. Uh, they were given to us as natural, natural rights. rights. So, so the and they're right next to each other. Yeah. And I, I don't think government has any right to know what kind of weapon you carry, or what kind of tank you have in your garage. Um, All right. So, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. that's a good intro. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or what movie you watch or what spaghetti you eat on a Thursday. Or it's, what your opinion is. Yeah. As long as you're not advocating um, for the. Violence here, go. Or well, yeah, go. Whatever. Yeah. Or, uh, Burn, violence against. Clinics, whatever. Right, then, then government has no right to restrict it. Yeah. And in fact, there's lots of. Uh, there's lots of case law, and, and most journalist majors uh, had to study that in school. It's called prior restraint. It's. It comes out of when when uh, a judge uh, tried to when police tried to stop a newspaper from publishing something in 1860 or something, okay. and 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 the judge said you can't res restrict them because they might publish something bad. Um, now, once they do, if they if it's criminal, if they if they did and violated the law, after they've done it, well, then they violated the law, um, and so that's. So that's why we say people say what well, rights are not absolute, especially the Second Amendment. I say, well, you know, gun control is more like taping someone's mouth because they might yell fire in a crowded theater because mm. taping everyone's mouth. That's not right. But Ben, I'm part of my job. Minority as the, report there. Yeah. <laughs> part yeah. of my job as the host is to make sure you're not sitting in the peanut gallery too much. Um, why don't you tell the listeners what you do at, at yeah. your two jobs yeah sure and then, uh, and then yeah, how, sure. We, how we met and why we're both in the same room yeah i like it yeah i know uh so so currently with uh ng companies um uh, uh, president and kind of acting as cfo of, of that okay organization and you of haven't course found a cfo yet yeah well you know <laughs> with the banking background you kind of get you know pigeonholed into yeah, that. Fair. so uh, and of course, you know, my business partner and, sure. and yeah. the main owner, You guys were Cameron. episode six yeah. of the Loco Experience. Yeah, yeah. Right uh, pre-pandemic. Just wasn't like right. Yeah, during December of Is that what it was? 20. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, yeah that was good times. You guys so. had both just recovered not long before. Yeah, it was a, ch it was a challenging time. It was. Uh, but no, we made it through and, and really growing well and got some uh, really exciting prospects. And so NG song. Company does what? Yeah, yeah hydro excavation. Think okay. of a wet, dry, like a shop vac the size of a concrete mixer. Yeah. You can go around and, and suck, you know, dirt out of the ground. So and that's Ben sucks. Yeah, yes. ben yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah, we suck. You know, why <laughs> it's, you know why it's so windy in North Dakota, Dudley? Why? Because Minnesota sucks and Montana blows. Oh Ooh. yeah, there you Ooh. go. Ba <laughs> ba -dum -bum. So, uh, so NG's company has got a hundred and some employees running around yep. doing hydrovax and yeah, yeah. We're you don't pull lines, you don't do nothing else. You nope. just suck holes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and instead of putting a big mechanical excavator, you know, in the ground and and digging down and hitting a yeah. gas pipe and blowing up, yeah. you know, the house next to them and you yeah, know, big and killing water the operator or sucker thing. Exactly. You just you, you shoot water in the ground, you suck the water up so that you can, or you know the mud the slurries. I'm the, thinking like Richie Rich style, like the machines that they had that could just like build a highway just by one path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing, nice? But it just yeah, kind of goes no. under the ground. Unfortunately, it, but it but it sucks you a path that you can do other well, stuff. It's, it's run really pipes, so that you can, do this and that. Yeah, yeah, you can do that, or or it's it's really that you're looking for a gas line or an electrical line. Mm. Because construction is about to commence, and oh. you don't know exactly where it is. The as built say, it should be six feet down, and it should be approximately right here. And you find out it's three feet down, and it's four feet over. <laughs> so you got to find it before you get an excavator in to, uh, to dig the ground. And yeah. so it's a, it's a huge safety 
you know, mechanism, yeah, yeah, really. Interesting. And, um, and, and then uh, Kinetic Research so. does what? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I've been at NG Company since about 2019 when I got out of banking. Yep, and, yep. Uh, yeah, you and I hold that. You know, I tried that, to hire yeah. Ben back in the day. That's true. And That's he true. started crashing uh, a networking group that uh, we did. That's how Ben <laughs> and I got totally acquainted. It was totally your net network group. Yeah, yeah. It was, well, the bank sponsored Old Town it. Tuesdays, and it was ping pong, pool, beer, and conversation for liberty-minded people, I suppose is probably a way to say it. Yeah, just good business owners and, and good uh, people. Yeah, Ben's a banker for another organization. He starts like coming regularly, and I'm like... You're cool, so it's fine. <laughs> Just don't steal my customers. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so uh, anyway, so Kinetic Research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I've uh, been a, uh, a partner with Kinetic Research Group. I think since about 2015, 14 or 15. I don't. Okay. I don't recall. It's been a while. Uh, and we make long-range precision chassis, which is a, a stocks yeah. for rifles. Okay. And uh, and accessories for those. For okay. Those not barrels, not triggers. Just we do the make chassis. some firearms as well. Okay. Um, that's not yes, our, that's yes, not they our do. Yeah, we know we. Yeah, make a, a very good uh, long range precision rifle. I have one. Yeah, and uh, it shoots. Uh, shoot real laser well. beam. Shoot real good. But uh, but the core of our business is is these aftermarket accessories and, yeah. and stocks. Sprucing and up your AR fifteen kind of. Uh, yeah, bolt action rifles. So if you or, got a oh, okay. Remington seven hundred or a Tika T three, you oh, know, bolt yeah. action rifle, and you stick it in, and you know, it's. You want to go elk hunting? I got a, I got a model one hundred. You got a model one hundred? I I do not. I don't have a little model too classic, maybe. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not too many but, around. Uh, um, and so is that company, it's up in Idaho still? Is yeah. That right? Yeah. So, so, uh, it actually started here in Colorado. Okay. And, um, well, maybe why uh, Dudley and I are kindred spirits and some of these things It started in Colorado. And then after some of the gun laws that passed in 2012 and became, hmm. uh, came to effect in 2013. You were like that mag fest or, or mag pole mag left. Pole that left. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and actually one of my business partners at KRG, uh, has a history with mag pole. He, he started out there okay. doing some engineering. Yeah. So we're friendly with those guys. Um, and so KRG left and went to, to Boise, hmm. um, and, and has a handful of people. Yeah, making stocks. yeah. I think it's more uh, like I think we got about craft kind of operation. Yeah, uh, kind of a, a small boutique. Uh, you know, I think we got about uh, goodness. I think we're at twelve employees right yep. now. That's pretty sizable. And, um, and we're kind of we're kind of spread out. Uh, a couple of our partners are in Boise. Uh, most of our operations are up in Coeur d'Alene, oh, Idaho. Wow. Uh, I'm here. Seems like an interesting place to find a labor force in Coeur d'Alene. But yeah, whatever. yeah. Uh, you know, and that's kind of that's become kind of a rich person's haven. <laughs> right. We sort of accidentally stumbled on that place years ago okay and uh now there's a bunch of rich people building you know multi-million dollar homes and, and this little fledgling you know business so uh and then uh, myself and um, another gal journey uh oh. live uh, here yeah. in uh, northern colorado yeah, yeah so we're all kind of remote and um uh, we've always worked that way so pandemic didn't really change much for us cool yep and right. um yeah and it was actually in banking that i met I met Dudley. And Dudley, would you like to transition from there? Tell me about young uh, Ben. Yeah, well, um, it was funny because we were uh, selling our our building in uh, downtown Windsor. Okay. Windsor was getting a little chee-chee at the time, and and um, and so we were going to sell the building, and we needed to buy another building. And okay. And with all that, you didn't have enough money. All his employees. Well, I mean, we actually did, but we wanted to finance part of it, so we. Um, and that's the tough part. It's a nonprofit. Right. I don't own it. You know, I joke, um, you know, if I die tomorrow, um, my kids get nothing. <laughs> right. Fair. <laughs> my wife gets that's nothing. That's why you have to have an overinflated salary now while you can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you better invest wisely. <laughs> invest wisely. Um, yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, um, so we uh, uh, we approached a number of banks and. And of course, they all want a personal guarantee. I'm like, I, I, how can I possibly guarantee something? It's not mine, um, you know. And 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 Ben was the maverick. And I, and somebody he introduced. He put down enough cash. He made a connection. It He's was like Travis, Travis Ackerman. It was Travis Ackerman and uh, a realtor, yep. a sharp guy. Hello, Travis. Yeah, and and uh, he said, "Hey, I got somebody you should talk to." It's funny because he showed up in our office, Ben, another guy, and he showed up in the office. And and we started talking, and and we both kind of had this bromance going. I'm like, how? After we talk for about 20 minutes, uh, I'm like, how many, have you and I not been best friends for the last? It was a step brothers moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. we just become best friends. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like it. it was. It was weird. Um, and we are best friends, so yeah. uh, we, um, you know that 
kind of melded together. And we, we have a lot of similar interests, not just the firearms and liberty side of things. So, yeah, fair. so bourbon, right. it's beer. Yep. Uh, I've got and, beer in the fridge too, if we need it. But Yep. I mean, we kind of graduated to bourbon now as our majority. Um, but, yeah. um, but I'm, you know, being a beer snob is, is still a good thing. Uh, so, I mean, people always ask me why you're a gun guy, a conservative. Why don't you drink Budweiser? I'm like, I live in Northern Colorado. It's it, to drink Coors in Northern Colorado is like living in the Bordeaux region of France and drinking Boone's farm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, oh, I that doesn't yeah. make any sense. You know, I will. I'll throw down with a banquet beer once in a while. Just never, to, never, no. ever. <laughs> College those fighting words for Dudley. No, those are fighting words. Yeah, my, well, some of my staff troll me when we have I hold when things parties a little more in. lightly, uh, which yeah. is maybe why I can, you know, yeah. hang out with. You'll live longer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, so, I, get, I get wound up on around the axle on that stuff. Talk to me about, um, like, what were those other things that you guys resonated about, like? Well, we're both believers. We both believe in Jesus Christ. And whoa, watch out! Um, I'll if Ben that. spills his bourbon on my couch, then you will have that in common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. just do it. Um, and we have, uh, uh, um, I don't know. Uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know the the liberty side of being pretty concerned about the world and and the direction Colorado's headed. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Very much in common. Yeah. And so, um, uh, you know, I mean, we don't, we both love cars and, um, I like it. Yeah. Both fast cars and I don't know, well, pretty much anything. Yeah. And, and we'd love shooting together. So, uh, uh yeah, do a lot of that. Fair so, enough. Yeah. Lot. There's just uh, you know, those friends you have that it's just, it's not much effort Yeah, yeah. to just have sure, a yeah. good friendship. Well, and it's it. easy right away. And yeah. if there's five years apart, then it's easy the very next day always. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah, right. to have a few yeah and we and we kind of um I, I think we both recognized that right away we were like now i'm older um i'm 57 so i'm a little bit older than yeah uh, than ben and older than me even yeah yeah I imagine that. so i want to go back um to like hear about dudley because we kind of heard ben's career journey in that episode six if you want to learn more my, my favorite part uh from that from you ben was your you know life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, mm-hmm. and your kind of ranking scale there. I'm sure, Dudley, you have resonate with that if you go back and listen. But um, I want to, like, learn about the founding of a gun owner's organization, you know, starting with uh, Rocky Mountain Gun Owners and, like, the why and, like, the how. <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, if you don't mind, let us I'd like to jump in the time machine and go back there. Yeah. You were CSU grad. You were from – where did you come from? I'm actually one credit short. And see issue. Oh, not a grad. Oh, so, literally Loser. one credit. I'm going to totally judge Drop you out. now. I know. Drop out. I know. That's okay. I flunked. I, so. My bourbon's gone already, but I think I got a lighter pour than you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> here I'll I'll catch up with you. Okay. So I so actually um, I was hired by uh, U.S. Senator Bill Armstrong uh, yeah. while I was in college. I was co- college Republican state chairman, and and I was hired to um, fill a position with him, and 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 did that in. Uh, uh, in 1989, and I was this snot-nosed kid out representing the the senior U.S. senator from Colorado. Yeah, and um, and I and how did Ar- that happen? Armstrong. Well, I mean, uh, I had a lot of political experience already. Yeah, um, working in did, politics. But did you grow up that way? Were your family involved? Like, tell me where you came from. Um, I grew up in uh, well, overseas, and then in uh, my oh, dad was military. a petroleum engineer. Oh, okay. and uh, we were actually living in Tripoli, Libya, when I was born. Wow. Came back to have me. My mom came back to Wyoming to have me. Uh, I went to high school in Spearfish, South Dakota, oh, north, north end of the Black of, Hills. Just went through Spearfish. Okay. Um, uh, who had a massive snowstorm last week. Yeah. Massive. Oh, we followed it up there and stayed in North Dakota for the holiday for yeah. Christmas. Oh, it's rough. But but uh, we uh, came to school here and and, um, and and basically when CSU was the number two party school in the nation. <laughs> that was um, your reasoning? Yes. Um, <laughs> well, and it was like coming from the Black Hills, it's like the closest cool place to go. It is, yeah. yeah. But I have always loved Colorado. I've, I've skied my whole life. And, yeah, cool. And so, um, um, and then got involved in politics and 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 stayed. And I, I, since I left South Dakota, I've never lived anywhere else. Hmm. And I'll always refuse to move to D.C. 
But uh, I worked for Bill Armstrong, who um, I might add had the most conservative voting record of any U.S. senator, including Jesse Helms, um, when mm-hmm. in in his last uh, two years in the U.S. Senate. Um, wow. He was he was a pretty rock solid conservative, and um, worked for him. Then worked for the Colorado Legislature down the state capitol. Had an office in the state capitol. And um, I was the kind of the consultant for and media advisor for the House Republicans. Wow. And so you had like a communications background, and that was just what you were good at, kind of ultimately. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really language. didn't have any any great communications background. I can write. Yeah. Um, and so, um, um, and and did that job for the House Republicans, and and then got involved uh, with some very very conservative uh, groups within the Republican Party. Uh, the National Right to Work Committee, uh, which w- seeks to stop forced unionism, yeah, um, and uh, a number of other um, con- conservative conspiracies, and uh, we, and uh, th- and then I, I was asked. Uh, I mean, I was always very passionate about guns. Grew up hunting birds and shooting and stuff in South Dakota, but uh, I, I kind of looking at getting involved, and I started watching as as the NRA had um, was giving a ratings like after dinner mints to politicians who voted like them. Yeah, and, right. and I'm like, this is wrong. And uh, started getting involved. And I was actually a contract lobbyist for the state affiliate of the NRA for about a uh, year and a half. Okay. And um, you're like, these are a bunch of hosers. Yeah. And that Basically. was <laughs> hosers. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, I actually, um, and I refused that year, 1993, I refused a job with the NRA. And uh, and then um, in 96, I started Rocky Mountain Gunners. Okay. And, and it was tough, you know, obviously. You're starting from scratch. Was I mean, it a membership organization? Yeah, it's a, it, it, again, it's 501c4 membership organization that, that uh, people... Um, so it was volunteer donates and you right, advocate right in the legislature. Right. And remember, this is Colorado when we had a May issue concealed carry law, so sheriffs could or could not issue you permits. Mm. Larimer County was an interesting part of that because uh, the existing Republican sheriff here, uh, Richard Shockley, um, had only issued three permits, and they were all to big donors of his. Oh, and um, and uh, we played a role in kicking him out of office uh, in 1996 and um, 94, and uh, um, he was he was been a Republican sheriff for 18 years. Wow! And um, yeah, he got booted. Ben, and what were you doing in 1994? <laughs> yeah. I was 12 years old. <laughs> he was eating his just, boogers. He was, he was probably exactly. just starting to learn how to shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Oh, man, 94. Sound. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 Kurt, I've been a gun lobbyist now. Just short of thirty years. Interesting. And um, and I don't. I'm writing a book now. Yeah. Um, I'm slowly years, good at it. Yeah. A slowly it's a coloring book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You'll use crayons. Um, uh, that's going to be called Confessions of a Gun Lobbyist. So Ooh. I'm going to give stories about things that have happened. Um, everywhere from um, telling of. Uh, mm, being in a, a elevator with a sheriff who tried to bribe you with a concealed permit back in the 1995. Whoa. Who, by the way, uh, that sheriff was ended up in his in the jail named after him. Hmm. Um, that's a long. <laughs> that's a funny story. But um, and uh, all the way up to uh, battles with Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm I make no qualms about it. Yeah, I detest Donald Trump. Really, I wouldn't piss down his throat if his heart were on fire. <laughs> And because I don't actually think he's a conservative, and he's one of the most anti-gun presidents ever to sit Is in the White right? House. I didn't ever. realize that. He and, kept that pretty under wraps. Um, well, I mean, maybe not like visibly, but like it I, isn't. I think people what, were blind. It to isn't it. something he was known for. Well, because the 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 mass media didn't want to say anything nice about him, but they only could say nice things about violating gun rights and right. so they right. didn't say nothing That's a good point. well it it confuses their narrative right. and <laughs> and the fact is and trump of course even his staff want to desperately wanted to avoid that but a number of them quit um so the pump stock ban was was really mm. a, a, a conspiracy between donald trump and 
and the NRA. Now it wasn't very. It wasn't a very well hidden. They did. It was out in the open. Yeah. yeah. And you know the saying goes, uh, "The man with a reputation of an early riser can sleep until noon." Um, <laughs> and to those of us a little older, I just, it, it's easier to say it took Nixon to go to China. Yeah. You know, a Democrat can't go to China because he'd be called a filthy communist. Right. But, um, but it, you know, Interesting. Nixon could do it because yeah. uh, he was thought yeah. of as an anti-communist. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Trump got away with a lot. And um, I could go on for hours about how yeah. disastrous well, he is. And I actually think he's even more disastrous now. Um, but, uh, right. but so I'm going to do my very best to make sure he's not the nominee. I was, I've been a delegate to the uh, 2012 and mm. 2016 national conventions, okay. Republican national conventions. And in fact, I was on um, committees, sure. uh, the uh, pre committees that set uh, policy platform and rules for those conventions. So I've done a lot of battle with both R- Mitt Romney's people and uh, Donald Trump's people. So, yeah. So um, I want to bring us back to like getting something off the ground. You know, you're, uh, and I'll talk for a little bit so you can refill your bourbon if you want to, but you're like, you start this 501c4 membership organization, and, you know, I don't know if it takes, I have to think that it takes dozens and dozens and dozens of members before there's any kind of salary for Dudley to draw. Yeah, yeah in fact, um, the first piece of mail, and and. Rocky Mountain Gunners was formed almost exclusively from direct mail. Okay. And in 1996, early, late 96, early 97. Um, I remember writing the piece of mail. I remember the state legislator who signed it. His name was State Representative Mark Paschal from Arvada. Mark's a good dude. Anyway, we, um, he signed the mail. That's, on, you know, on the from address, it says State Representative Mark Paschal. Okay. <laughs> our mailing address. And, um, and that's kind of borrowing his status to speak, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's I don't know. Think of think of a movie star who advertises on TV for for like retirees uh, pensions or something like that, <laughs> right? And, you know, there are lots of them. Well, and, or like Governor Polis who signed your Colorado cashback gift this fall <laughs> before yeah. the election. Yes. So <laughs> you know, the, those are the kind of things that you. You know, you you borrow their status to speak, and and they're saying nice things about you. They can say nicer things about you than, um, <laughs> you know, and and get people fired up. And and of course, since he has a, a title, um, we were nobodies at the yeah, time. Yeah. And so uh, we did a mail piece, and I remember putting it in trays, and I had some decent lists I collected and put them in the trays. And I I remember I prayed about it and said, if this works, if it comes back, um, in big numbers, great. Then we know it's a going concern, and we'll try and turn it into a growing concern. If not, okay, then yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. And it did. Yeah, it came back in bushel baskets. And, wow. And um, and direct mail is really where uh, we've been funded. A lot, of, a lot of our critics— Even still. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. A lot wow. of our critics say, um, oh, they're just funded by the gun manufacturers. That's where they— eat. I'm actually sitting on a, a couch. I almost spilled bourbon on a couch next to a— the only gun manufacturer who's ever actually donated directly <laughs> yeah. to to our to We've our organization. We've only donated forty billion dollars. Uh, yeah. So, no, oh wait. Oh, yeah. No. I was gonna say maybe what a couple rifles and uh, yeah. a couple of chassis. Couple uh, rifles, some chassis, and but I mean, manufacturers don't give us money; they give the NRA money, and um, because so be more of a grassroots style, I suppose. Yeah, we are, and and we wear the black hat. We're not interested in going to their cocktail parties. Um, because we're just going to break the China, right? So, um, you know, I've been to those cocktail parties. I used to be a part of the establishment. Yeah, they suck. There's no, they're not fun. Yeah. Um, all so people charged. who hate each other are all patting each other on the back and saying how much they like each other. I'm like, you're all lying. Um, I'd rather be out shooting or drinking good bourbon. So, it's a really important thing to consider. Um, you're not owned by anybody, and that's what my yeah. my experience both. Uh, you know, you know, seeing you work professionally, but also being you know, friends, um, I, I can say that e- Dudley's like an, an equal opportunity un, offender, un, unownable. You yeah. know, and so, um, and and so there's something that's that's very freeing about that. And and yeah. it's, it's as I've gotten to know Dudley more, it it reminded me, and I've mentioned this to Dudley, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, that that kind of the turning point for me when I saw 
Wayne LaPierre of the NRA shaking hands with Harry Reid <laughs> in a photo in the NRA magazine that they, they sent out. I was a NRA, right. I can't remember, lifetime member, <laughs> tenure member, whatever. You know, I think I think I'm giving my five hundred dollars, my thousand dollars to you know fight fight for the cause. Yeah, and, you're like, and and I open it up. Harry Reid is there. Yeah, and he's Reed? shaking hands with Harry Reid because D- Dudley has the details, but I remember it had something to do with um, that the NRA funded a shooting range in Nevada. No, and, you know, was it no? They like that? they lobbied the federal government to oh. put sixty three million dollars of taxpayer money into a shooting range in clark county so there's a little bit more yeah a little bit more behind this i just i see this photo and it's like you're shaking hands with the devil man what in the world and it was promoted like you got some of the devil's juice and so they so they they being the nra gave like a i don't know if it was a rating or or probe harry reed or vote for harry he's a friend of of gun owners actually wayne lapierre on video at that said he's a true champion of the second amendment and that That's that was that was kind of my red pill moment <laughs> as far as the NRA is concerned. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't recall. It's probably like two thousand eight, two thousand. No, two thousand ten because 10. because yep. remember uh, Harry Reid had. Um, I can really nerd out on this stuff because I know we, we every don't have election. time today. No, but you don't. But Harry Reid was Harry Reid uh, only had one real challenge for the U.S. Senate, and that was a Sharon Angle in two thousand ten. So the NRA gave cover so that he survived. Oh, yeah, yeah. And who was in? And when she was too much of a wild card. No, no, they they just won. Oh, it was like a dirty deal. They, they were whining. Like, you scratch my back, I'll scratch they yours. Were, a little but, bit. But he didn't. So what <laughs> happened in 2012, a, after the Newtown, Connecticut shooting? Right. Um, Harry Reid led the battle for gun control on the U.S. Senate floor in 2013, and and then the NRA said, Gee, oh, "Whoops, who, who oh who to thunk that would happen?" Right. Oh, Mike. Yeah, but they they've done that everywhere. Um. And I, you know, we don't have to have get too much of an NRA bashing session. They're doing plenty of their own bashing right now themselves. So you've got this organization with with some sixty five employees or whatever, or the the pair of them. Yeah. What do all those people do? Do you have people on the ground in various places? At least you reference. Are yeah. they marketing people? Well, Are they? You got. Uh, you have both political people out in the states and okay. work in the state legislatures. If you have followed. The fact that um, we now have 25 states with constitutional carry, no permit needed concealed carry. As long as you're legally eligible to own a gun wow. and purchase a gun, you don't have to ask government permission to carry it. That's awesome. Um, we have 25 states now. Is Col- That's us. Is Colorado becoming one of those? <laughs> Not kidding? likely. Yeah. I actually- How much, I how took much a, did you already drink? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I took a concealed carry class uh, with my wife some time ago. From whom? Um, it, was, it was one of- Hotelling's acquaintance. Oh, Makaira. Yeah, yeah, but it was before that was quite formal. It was okay. one of his friends or something. Okay. He recommended it anyway, uh, and it was a great class and stuff. And then I never followed through with getting the yep. carry because, in part, like I feel like that would be a flag of, okay, this guy's got guns. Go get his guns. If there's ever a go get your guns time in Colorado. If you ever bought a gun on pay, um, from a store. I never have. Okay. Well, oh, there you go. Well, now, but yeah. you just advertised you have guns. So. I don't have We're a gun. I never section. said I have a gun. I, I lost them all in a boating my, accident. <laughs> I just said I didn't want to have my so house many boats, searched for my guns. So many accidents. That so I don't have. I mean, those lakes have got to be, <laughs> they got to be just like full. <laughs> I, we should start going scraping the lakes. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that was that was my own weird like tinfoil hat kind of thing. Yeah. It relates. Yeah. And I feel like I have the right to carry a gun if Dude, I a few damn years well ago, want to. Well, you do. crazy. You still do. You're probably right. You can you can you can open carry. I've always co- a you futurist. can still open carry in most parts of Colorado. Is that right? Yeah, you can open carry a pistol. In fact, you can have a concealed handgun or a concealed AR-15 in in your car right now. No permit needed. As long as in a case or something. Right? Nope. Or nope. nope. It's an extension of your personal. No. Oh. It's because it's because the, the uh. law says you have the ability to carry a gun in your car. And it shall not be considered concealed. Um, oh, essentially. is that right? So, so oh, not, we wrote that into the law I, hmm. in in two thousand three into our Colorado okay. shall issue law. And I would th- like to have my pistol in my. I don't have a pistol, but if I had a pistol, I would like to have it in my yeah. car. Yeah, exactly. If you had a black Glock, grip with a thirty three <laughs> round magazine, um, you you actually yeah you shouldn't. You shouldn't carry a handgun in your car. You should carry an assault rifle. So okay, there's no, no there's no reason to get in a g- gunfight with a handgun, unless that's the only thing you have. Well, I just feel like in the confined space of a car, you're like 
fucking sure. around with yeah, an assault yeah. rifle. Try no. Fair enough. Banging it into Short shit. Short rifle. But if there's somebody, I don't know, I feel like in the you know 10 to 40 feet, if I've got a nine-round clip, I can handle clip, a lot of drink. threats. Yeah. You said clip, drink. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, clip. yeah. No, magazine. Magazine, magazine um, whatever. Whatever. Same difference. This is my weapon and this is my gun. Yes. <laughs> They're fighting. This is for fun. Did you so, know what I meant? Okay, good. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah, right. I know, I know. Gun gun queers. So I got a good a, a good friend. A, a good friend in Congress. He says and he's he's a gun nerd. And as you might imagine, I'm a gun nerd. I, I mean, and so yeah. and we'll have a gun section here of this show. Yeah. Sure. So and he he's and, and uh, his name is Thomas Massey and Thomas is hmm. like yeah. uh, Thomas and I are like he's like, you know, Dudley we're not just nerds. We're gun queers. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. We're a little queer for guns. I wonder, does that fit into the LGBTQ plus? Yes, it does. Plus? Hey, yes. Plus. Yes, is I'm claiming plus plus? protected status. <laughs> yes. Uh. So, um, by the way, at this stage in your life when you started uh, Rocky Mountain Gun Owners and did this mailer, got a pretty good bushel basket response, are you a married guy already? Do you have kids? Do you yeah. have income? Do you have, like, expenses? Yeah, I was, I was married, but... Um, but didn't have, uh, I mean, I was doing, I had to do other political consulting. There was no way around it. You were kind of a um, hustle in general doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. To make money. Um, and, and worked, yeah, I worked in politics. That's where my skills were. Um, mm-hmm. I was also doing some weapons training. Mm. Uh, I used to do weapons familiarization courses with a friend of mine. Um, we were teaching. He was bringing out um, special forces, spec war troops out to a ranch of his, and, and we were training them in, in uh, kind of exotic machine guns from Russia and all around the world that he owned hmm, and um, that they were likely to run into. Yeah. And, and, but you know, frankly, they don't, we don't have them in the U S arsenal. And so they were like, they wanted those guys to know what it was. Yeah, and so, so I used to do a lot of that, a lot of help uh, with that. That really got, got me some good experience. I didn't serve in the military. So um, that's where I learned to shoot machine guns and, and now I have a FFL uh, with a, what they call a, a basically a license to own machine guns. Oh, and um, so I own quite a See, few. See, I think guns. there should be a super license uh, for driving. Like it feels really unfair to me that with my driving abilities and age and capabilities, that I have to abide by the same rules as an eighty-five-year-old lady that. Like can barely make a right hand. You know turn. what? I can totally get behind this. And I'm I think, in. I'm you in. Know, up to like a point. I'll lobby that. Point one two for DUIs. Twenty can miles an hour over your speed limit. Yeah, let's get this in there. Yeah, freedom. Super license. Hey, Super I, license. I mean, I yeah. did venture a number of years ago in 2018. I I did venture out of concealed handguns and firearms issues to pass a a, a law concealed to blade. allow nice. switchblades. Nice. So Colorado, this used to be a felony to to possess this on your on your person wow. and in 2018 they're legal nice so uh Good job. yeah yeah so he's, he's, he's pretty legit he's due like, for a new cause is what he's saying yeah right? okay. I do yeah for super license how, how much money is there i'm a contract lobbyist so. i think there would be a lot of people that would chip in for super license. go to the porsche dealer do it yeah all the bmw go say hey look I'll have that as an add-on when they someone buys a really nice car. Right. Um, you just add a fee onto my lobbying fee. Yeah. Well, and if you you might get it through Congress if you like put like five hundred dollars to the general fund for Polis to spend as he wants to. No, no, no. <laughs> state legislature. <laughs> yes. Yeah, now, legislature. where you really want it is in Wyoming. Maybe that's where you want the the special license in Wyoming. It's long, straight. Oh no my one gosh. Out there. Yeah. Great so, was... Dudley, I deviated. I took us off the trail a yeah. little bit. You yeah. started telling me about people in the state legislatures and stuff, and then, like, do you just have people stuffing envelopes and stuff or communications? Like, tell me about the structure just a little bit about, like, what a 60-person organization yeah. that does what you do, what do they all do? Well, I mean, we have marketing people. Um, we have... They're on uh, the Facebooks and the LinkedIn's and stuff. Well, those are... Uh, that we have email social campaigns. media people. Yes, email, direct mail. Um, you got to manage uh, sending out a... Yeah, somewhere in the order of like in twenty twenty one, I think we so- sent out something like thirty million pieces of mail. Mm. Um, Whoa! Yeah, you're killing yeah. the trees, man. Yeah. Well, so it goes. Yeah, yes, they, they grow. They're yeah, as to say, the renewable resource, man. <laughs> um, so we. Um, Thanks for tr- keeping the paper companies in business. Yeah. Is what I meant to say. Yeah. 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 So we. Uh, um, they have marketing. We have marketing staff who do. 
for instance, we have a video team. Um, sure. We publish videos. Uh, you know, if there are any lefties listening to this, I'm sure there are. Um, we can trigger them by talking the, about the fact that we had Kyle Rittenhouse out here uh, oh. in October. Nice. And um, ha- enjoying some shooting our machine guns and flying in a helicopter and playing around. Um, yeah, that I, got them all woke. I listened woke. to, uh, to a, him describing that whole situation on a, like two or three different podcasts. Yeah. And... Like it's no wonder the media dropped that topic in a hot minute once once that came out. It was like, a, yeah, yeah, a railroad I into mean, a. He's yeah. just a young kid, right? And you know, I mean, I I laugh because he's like a year and a half older than my son, right? And uh, uh, yeah, nice kid, he's pretty well spoken. Yeah, he is, and and um, kind of been forced to grow up. You know, he's actually <laughs> right. he's actually staying at our place at uh, at Shot Show. Oh, good. Or okay. VRBO. So he's going to be on our shot show booth. There you go. Um, uh, but um, we have, um, of course, we have a lot of administrative staff. You can't have that many people without having accounting yeah. and uh, HR. HR, and you got insurance to deal with. Are you day to day operations? You have like a COO no. or something, Dudley, so that like this stuff can kind of happen without you? Yeah. Probably being structural, there yes. Uh, if, if I can feel, but. Because it's a not for profit, it doesn't necessarily have the same titles, but yeah. effectively, yes. I, yeah. I mean, I have I now have, I have three vice presidents, so we're all real sharp guys, okay, and who cover the different areas of it. Um, I'm trying to, uh, as I'm getting a little older, uh, I'm trying to let them handle less all that. Integral to all the things, yes, and for me to try and do the things that uh, you know, forty, fifty thousand foot level. So I pretty much am in an airplane a lot. I, I fly about a hundred thousand miles a year. Wow. Um, and I go to see big donors and then pretty much U.S. senators. I don't don't really talk to members of the House except for some a few okay. of the really good guys. I don't – there's no reason. There's just peons. Yes. Big donors, there's members one, of the House. And they're one – They're mean, one – And right here on the Loco Experience Podcast. Yeah. One 435th of one half of one third of the federal government. <laughs> whoop de doo um, yeah. Are you using your bully pulpit? Okay, great. Um, um, but – uh, yeah, I do do a lot of travel. I had it I mean very interesting one this fall where I literally was traveling to meet at a, a big donor in uh, Nevada who uh, manufactures weapons and and mostly machine guns and sells them to foreign countries and such. Um, and while we were at the meeting, he said, hey, hey, "You're going to have to excuse me. I have to go talk to these people." The Ukrainian military attaché is here in the building, and they wanted to. Uh, I just saw your Instagram post on that today. They wanted to talk to whoever uh, can sell them the big guns, and they wanted to. Sell, well, they, they, they were there to look at the same guns I was looking at. So, um, Mark nineteen grenade launchers and fifty cal machine guns. But, uh, uh, but anyway, that's. I, I have some interesting. Um, meetings i mean it's I'm not sure. it's it's not boring uh my my the weirdest single day i ever had in my life um was with a donor and one of his friends walked in and it was the king of spain <laughs> i'm not kidding you cool. and he said <laughs> you got to not the punchline yeah he called you get in his title is your you need, address him as your majesty i'm like yeah, you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm going to use that every time I talk to him because <laughs> where else do you get to use your majesty right. and not not I asked not my wife sarcasm. to use that and she just <laughs> she didn't like that? It. It doesn't no. work, huh? Okay. That's not. Yeah. Ben, I want to get you back in the conversation a little bit. Talk to me about your relationship with guns. <laughs> yeah. Like, like where did that, were you raised that way, if you will, hunting and no, shooting and whatever. No, no hunting, no shooting. Uh, you have an older brother, I remember. Yeah, older brother. Uh, he's a surgeon now, and yeah. uh, you know, so he doesn't uh, have guns, or he does. No, he does. Uh, in fact, uh, he's he's an avid hunter. And, okay, and quite a good hunter. Um, and uh, he's he, gosh, I bet if he could go every weekend, he would. He lives mm. up in Cheyenne. Yeah, good guy. And then, uh, but yeah, no, my father's a, a professor of civil engineering right. here in Fort Collins, and just good dude. And yeah, I bet uh, your dad. Yeah, so he came to a Matthews yeah. House event with us, yeah, right. once or twice. Yeah, yeah, you met him. So, um, uh, I was six years old when my grandfather in Louisiana handed me a single shot twenty two rifle mm-hmm. and took us out uh, to an old military base that you know been decommissioned, you know, I don't know, fifty years prior or something like that. And so we drove out into the woods and. 
Uh, and I remember him taking a, a ballpoint pen, like a Bic pen, okay. and he stuck it in the sand, sticking up, and I don't know, maybe 25, 50 you know, feet away. I, yeah, I yeah. don't know, but you know, just enough for a six-year-old. Right. And with little iron sights, he gave me one bullet and stuck it in there, and he said, okay, shoot the pen. And I shot the pen in half. Wow. I will, you know, uh, there's certain experiences in your life that you never forget. Yeah. I will never <laughs> forget that moment. So uh, thank you, Granddad. Uh, that wow. was kind of the beginning, uh, being six years old. And that was just this intrigue with, with rifles yeah. uh, as well, and, and maybe particularly now. Uh, but at the time, you know, maybe not realizing, wow, I'm over here, and I'm able to shoot I this tiny thing, thing over, there. over there, and I could do it over and over and over again. It's just, <laughs> I don't know, it's just fun, you know? It's, it's mechanics. I just told a story of from when I was about five, my first time uh, making a twenty two shell go off, and it was behind my parents' house, and... I, I knew it went bang somehow or whatever, so I smashed it with a rock. Oh! <laughs> and it went bang, and it shot the house, like went right past me and shot the house. And I was like, I'm lucky that didn't go through my tummy. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, anyway, I told that story to my mom and my sister over the weekend last weekend. And, <laughs> and they're like, that's what that was. Yeah, yeah. That, was yeah. that was the wow. first and last time I did that experiment. Yeah, no, so, uh, yeah, uh, six years old, um, that's when that started. And then a uh, uh, dear friend of mine, Landon Lynch, as we were growing up, you know, I was probably, I don't know, we were probably 12 years old or something like that. And it was his father, Doug Lynch. Doug, mm. if you're listening, thank you. Uh, Doug that took us out shooting. Yeah. And uh, Doug now works at, at Burris, which is... Uh, a, oh, oh, really? Yeah. Wow, I haven't heard this story. Yeah, so uh, Doug works at Burris. He used to be a you know tech guy. and a scope um, manufacturer in Greeley? Scope manufacturer, yep, in Greeley. Yeah, Burris yeah. and Steiner are, yeah. are owned by uh, Beretta, but they're okay. you know, um, headquartered under there, there Greeley. Or at least the Burris division is. Anyway, um... And Doug, he would reload his own ammo, and I'd never heard of that before. Here I am, you know, 12 years old, and he would take us down to his basement, and what are these machines and these contraptions? And and he just got into it, and I love the minutia. I love the mechanics, and so, yeah. you, know, you know, Dudley and I talk about, you know, sharing the love of guns and, and of cars and these sorts of things. There's these, something, right. you know. But it's more than that. Like, I yeah. love I love shooting guns. I think it's super cool. I'm annoyed by cleaning guns. I don't want to take them yeah. apart and put them back together, but you probably do. But you, yeah, you love motorcycles. There's something about yeah. the, the mechanics of of, yeah. of seeing all of these materials come together in such a way that it that it causes some kind of you know kinetic you know energy or or, or movement or yeah. you know I can I can put all these stationary things together and then they become a, a motion driven thing with energy and 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 so um, it just it amazed me that he would make his own ammunition and then we would take it out and we'd shoot it and it was really accurate. And there are these machines and contraptions and bullets and powder and primers, the whole thing. And so that that sort of was was the next the catalyst, seeds, like the yeah. oh man. And um, I will never forget he had this beloved Kimber 1911 pistol, mm. and it was his baby. And uh, I'll, I'll fast forward about 10 years later. He actually sold me that gun. He knew I oh, loved it so wow. much. So to this day, I have Doug's Kimber 1911. It's, it's, uh, it's one of my babies. But anyway. That's cool. Um, and it was, it was that shooting with Doug and my friend Landon that, uh, that really just, just kind of solidified my, yeah. my desire and enjoyment of this sport. Uh, you know, I didn't think of it. You're from kind a, of adopted into shooting in a yeah, way. Yeah, I didn't think of it from a political standpoint or that it meant anything. I just, it's a mechanical thing. It's fun. It's loud. Yeah. Uh, and I enjoy it. And that was it. Did you, do you ever think that our society has lost um, some of the permanence? Very few people live on the land that they no, grew yeah. up on, mm -hmm. that live in the town they grew up in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can all give the rationalization well why do we really need to um yes i'll take some of that okay now that we're well or 107 and take 107 yes. oh my gosh that's just a little bit yeah baby uh we kind of lost that and um and i'm i'm not a traditionalist in that respect but i i do think we've missed that and it's why firearms hand me our great family heirlooms mm -hmm. because you know grandpa you know shot this shotgun yeah and yeah. he taught me how to shoot on this shotgun and or you know it's tough to keep cars right yeah. i mean that's yeah we're gonna to keep, keep a long time keep grandpa's 57 chevy 
Right. Um, but don't really have a place a, in the garage. That's a pretty expensive proposition. Yeah, um, yeah. So I always like encourage that uh, to people. I said, don't, you know, they come to me and say, I need to get rid of this. I inherited 50 guns. I'm right. like, don't. I'm like, yeah, sell some of them, but Unless you need if the you money. don't want them. But, yeah. but, my gosh, don't get rid of family heirlooms. There's something fun about that. No, I'm, you're exactly right. I have my first 1911 pistol. Yeah. And so most mm. guys on their 21st birthday, they go out and they have a beer, right, you know, with yeah. their friends. Yeah. And I went to Sportsman's Warehouse. It was my 21st birthday, and I was I was knocking on the door. It was like it was 7.59, <laughs> 8 o'clock, the door's open. I walk in. I knew exactly what I wanted. I bought a stainless steel, 1911, 45. I have it to this day. This was you before know. you got the Kimber. Uh, yeah, yes. How many yeah, that was my first, do you have? Uh, I think nine. Um, so I, I kind of have a problem. I, I really enjoy it. Guys are going to listen to this and go, only nine? You know, <laughs> If uh, you can count the number of yeah. guns you have, you have on oh, your fingers. Too yeah. Few. Have yeah, too yeah. few. So. I've got a t-shirt that says that, actually, that uh, I wear when I have to go to a liberal event of some sort. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it is fun. And, and Dudley, to your point, like now I share that with my kid. It was, it was my eight-year-old was just asking me about something because he was building a little Lego, you know. Yeah. And um, and I was able to show him my first 1911. And I said, buddy, this is my first one. Yeah. Now, I've sold other guns. I, I will never sell this one. Yeah. You know? You yeah. know, maybe it's yours or your brother's when, right. you know, when I pass. And so um, that was that. That's that's fun to, to pass on. Um, but that's, yeah, maybe back to the back to your question. Then then how yeah, did I yeah. how did I get into this? And so uh, uh, just just kind of kept buying firearms and you know you get pistols are interesting and then you start shooting you know ar-15s and those are interesting and then and then for me i found this thing called a precision long-range rifle a bolt action rifle yeah and this was like late 2000s gotcha. you know kind of that that world that's your um, real passion it, yeah it is it is my yeah. passion and because uh, that's and, like the penultimate almost it's like the sniper yeah style opportunity or whatever yeah. but it's not it, like it's not like you're sniping you're not taking out lives you're just showing that Hey, from 740 yards, I can put a small group in this target with this gun. It's a good point. I'm glad actually you say that. We refer to, uh, and I have no military background. My my business partners do on KRG, and yeah. and uh, you know they they you know corrected me back in the day. A sniper is is the person you know who right. actually has to go hunt people, and and I hope yeah that never ever happens to me. Uh, it, but the tool is a precision rifle, right? Yeah. And so, um, yeah. And so I, I, I fell in love with these precision rifles, and it was just it's fun and it's interesting. And, and as you mentioned, the skill set is challenging. It's like playing a guitar and not having fret buzz. Right. You know, like it's difficult to to shoot seven, eight, hundred, you know, nine hundred yards consistently and and um and over and over and in different situations. Yeah. It, there is a skill set to it, of course. Just like a great guitar, you know, that guitar is going to sound a little better if it's a if it's a quality built instrument, you know, and a, a good precision rifle is, is going to shoot a little more consistent if mm. it's a yeah. if it's a quality built, you know, precision tool. But it's up to the, the shooter. And that's interesting to me. And so that's where actually I met the guys from KRG. Mm. And this is about 2009. And so, um, believe it or not, I met Justin Juarez, who's uh, the primary owner and, okay. and founder of. Yeah. of kinetic research group um it's two, about 2009 and there was a website a local website that dudley knows as well uh called the sniper's hide okay the sniper's hide is uh started by this guy frank galley i think it was is frank a marine background marine sniper yeah, yeah. yeah marine scout sniper um yeah good guy local guy and uh very well known in this community and um mm. he started this forum which is basically just a bunch of people yelling at each other about you know whose rifle is better and who knows more about you know <laughs> precision shooting, but that's that's kind of where I learned you know is just reading all these guys' information was just this it yeah. was a, like I've done with motorcycles frankly like yes. I consumed every cycle world from 1989 or 91 or something like that up through a yeah. few years ago every yeah. time you know and so for guys like you know in in my my age my generation of 40 you know um at the time like that was the place to find information yeah. was snipers hide and forums online on the internet so um there was this guy justin and he posts that he is making a a rifle stock and uh 
And I just out of nowhere, I sent him a message and it turns out he was in Colorado. I said, hey, I'm in Colorado. I'll, I'll shoot that thing for you. You know, you're kind of an idiot. Like, I want something free. Can I shoot your gun? <laughs> I'll give you some free exposure. Yeah, yeah, free exposure. Right? Yeah, worth nothing. Anyway, and... Um, and were you competing or something like that? No, no, no he was just, just, he was online. Just, he said, I'm making this, this, you know, uh, this new stock. We call yeah, him a chassis. Want but, some feedback. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just kind of, that, that's how it started. And then, uh, and then another mutual friend, uh kind of connected us and turns out he was in longmont up up here in the fort collins area and yeah. uh we met and i uh, ended up shooting some guns together and we just stayed in touch we stayed uh you know kind of uh acquaintances close acquaintances and then uh after uh after the the gun law issues here in colorado in 2012 he left and we just you know we call every you know a couple i don't know a couple six months or something like that and just connect and yeah. um and yeah. so yeah there's an opportunity he said hey you know would we like you uh, uh, those guys, a nerdy banker right? Type so it was guy. actually he, his brother, and his his good friend John. Uh, so Justin, Vince, and John started the company. They're all uh, Army SF guys, and uh, with various sniper backgrounds. Actual, you know, the right. real deal. Right, and, right. And me, a banker, you know, right. at the time. <laughs> yeah. And they said, hey, we we could use a little, you know, help on the finance side, just kind of you know business perspective, and and um, you, you know. We don't hate you. <laughs> that was yeah. kind, of, kind of it. We, we kind of trust yeah. you, for yeah, a, yeah. which is unusual for a banker. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, how'd that happen? So um, I lied to him a lot. That's how it works. No, um, <laughs> and so uh, we, we just became friends, and um, I, I I bought into the company back then. Again, I, yeah. 2013, 2014, so, yeah. somewhere in that. Whatever. In that range. And um, uh, yeah, we've just been, been friends and business uh, and partners Were you since. acquainted with Dudley? So. Before no, that, so then, I was or working at seventeen. 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 I was working at Advantage Bank yep, uh, yep. here in Fort Collins, and uh, yeah, our, and our more and more friend. acquainted because of your involvement with the industry through KRG and stuff like that, right? <laughs> yeah, Just knowing the challenge. Yeah, the so Travis is like, "Hey, you got to meet this guy that I'm trying to help find a building, uh, and and you know, it's a little little unique situation. Can you help financing and you know, a banker? Your answer is always yes of until you find out yeah. more about it. You know, uh, and so yeah, we went over and and met dudley in, in person same thing you know i left i was like why are we not friends I don't yeah know why we'll have to be friends you know, from here. yeah yeah yep. just decided i like it uh, so that's when we met yeah 2000 yeah was this 17 and now was, and yeah. then last night progressed that to last night and we're trying to figure out a european river cruise yeah take yeah, our wives yeah, on with our wives oh. and stuff so it's fun it's fun <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah I, I tell dudley i'm like i don't think my wife wants to do that i asked katie She's like, that sounds amazing. It's like, wow, I don't know my wife very well. She just wants to hang out with Never Dudley. Never mind. What's Actually, your wife's she name, says it's Cindy. Yeah. Cindy. Hey, Cindy, shout out. Hope yeah. you listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's that's uh, how I, I got to yeah. where I am and, and just been Dudley, same question for you. Like, did you hunt and fish and do stuff? Like, you were in, where were you again? Italy? Well, no, Libya? Uh, well, at yeah. first, but yeah. not Germany, born there. Germany and but and really, then, you can't shoot in any of these places, really. Well, you can, but uh, now as a kid, <laughs> they're I was all AK forty sevens. Yeah, yeah, I was in uh, Wiesbaden, uh, West Germany, okay, at, uh, uh, which is where we went during the Arab Israeli War, and uh, mm. and then came back to the states and. But I grew up in northern end of the Black Hills, and right. and, and so when you, by shooting, the time you were a teenager and stuff, you were doing I, that. I, I've been a bird hunter. My whole life, and sure. um, I don't really didn't have any formal training until, frankly, until after college. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but you know, when all my when when everybody in college went to Mazatlan for spring break, yeah, I went up to the mountains um, with my friends and camped and blew stuff up and shot guns and <laughs> like it and drank beer. We uh, my my experience was um, gopher hunting. Oh, thirteen line. Ground squirrels. You mean prairie rats? Prairie rats, I guess. Yeah, prairie yeah. dog, yeah. So, Certs, self erecting well, rifle little tiny targets. things yeah. compared to prairie dogs. I mean, they're they're just you know the size of this might oh, be their so body. Oh, really? yeah, little guy. Oh, yeah. so real gophers. Yeah, yeah, little, go, little yeah, little tiny. They're thirteen like ground gophers. squirrels yeah, up yeah, in North yeah. Dakota. Right. And we drive around the pastures, and there was all these gopher holes and stuff, and you you could whistle them out like <laughs> they look up to see what's making that weird noise, and then you shoot them. <laughs> um, but they're really skinny, yeah, and, and yeah. it's hard to get hard very to close to them. And so when I took a class in college, I took a, a FIAD credit class, a rifle marksmanship, in the basement of one of the, the right. buildings East at Dallas. North Dakota yeah. State. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, I was crushing everybody because I've been shooting gophers since I was 11 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. I digress. Memories. Small targets. Small targets makes good shooting. Yeah. Um, so I guess – 
we kind of covered a lot of the journey stuff and what you do. Tell me more about Nagar as appropriate or what's coming down the pike right now. Like, yeah, what's, what's the current yeah, event? Let's get we, the, we're we right just cut now. a video that's uh, went active probably while we've been talking. We published on our YouTube channel, which is a growing uh, concern. <laughs> um, get that Noah's Mill there. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we went, um, we just found out yesterday that the Supreme Court granted, uh, is going to hear another New York case and because if you recall this summer last summer when the Bruin decision was was issued and and Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas said um, you got to show text history and tradition of gun control otherwise it's just not valid yeah, I remember that. second Amendment protects it and then New York passed a, a pretty bad uh, response immediately and um, and basically flew the bird at at Clarence Thomas. Oh. And um, so all of us... mistake right there. Yeah, all of us have been wondering, when is that going to... Yeah. Is it, what's going to happen? Is this... You know, what happens if, like, California just keeps defying the Supreme Court? Right. And and even cynically, a lot of gun owners are very worried about that. They're like, this might not bode well. People, they'll just ignore the Supreme Court. Well, yesterday, um, the Supreme Court said... Um, yeah, we're going to rehear that. And I think what they're going to do is pull down New York's pants and paddle their ass. Yeah. And I, if that happens, we are having a watch party for that. Um, cause, because, because, be Sorry, honest, Kurt. The, the, the metaphor is <laughs> yeah, the, too strong. I know. The, the, the optics are great. The 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 second amendment and the and the second amendment of the constitution and the bill of rights is just a piece of paper in archives in washington dc it hasn't done crap yeah. now i was quoted in in the the chicago mcdonald case back many years ago um our brief was and and it really eh, okay but it never really stopped anything hmm. my my real litmus test is does it stop gun control from passing and, right. and and being enacted and it hasn't and colorado is a great case in 2013 we passed a magazine ban um for extremely common magazines right. for greater than greater than 15 rounds and the state legislature passed it um and i they know some people with magazines greater than 15 rounds and How, we will, let's, oh my let's gosh get into that so. so and what happened was what happened was we um the they ignored the second amendment and but bruin changed all that they mm. the clarence thomas's opinion on on the bruin decision ch this summer changed all of it which is why mm. we in right now have seven federal lawsuits mm. all so you're around feeling the country your oats right now oh yes like this has um, fueled your fires and ability to get stuff in, done in, at the state level in even more so in fact we filed against the town of superior we filed a temporary restraining order mm. against the town of Superior because they were trying to enact these gun controls. Mm -hmm. And o Obama appointed judge granted it. Mm. So now res temporary restraining orders. Yeah. What do you apply temporary restraining orders to? Rapists? Um, <laughs> people who are who are trying to Do kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I figured, okay, that's appropriate. They're trying to rape the Second Amendment. So we're going to go up a TRO. Maybe not equivalent, but the urgency Pretty is close. there. Pretty close. The urgency is there. Now, the great... Um, so, um, now I'm sitting on a couch next to one of the plaintiffs against the state of Colorado. Yes. Okay. On the magazine ban. Ben is... And uh, and Travis Swartz are the... Are, two of the plaintiffs against the state of Colorado on that magazine ban from 2013. We we used the Bruin decision, brought it back into federal court this time, and are challenging the Colorado's mag ban. I don't know how it survives. Hmm. Now, now to business people, the business people are listening to this and they go, I don't really care that much about guns. I'm never going to have this. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I... I but want to tell care you a lot about free speech, though. You, and you should the care right about to do free what speech. They want to do. You should care about you free really speech, should. and you should care about this. Colorado's economy is very much based on outdoor sports. A lot of it hunting, a huge amount of it hunting. Uh, it brings an enormous amount of money into this state, and and okay, I get it. The whole woke crowd, there's no fixing that. 
they've got a virtue signal all day long. But if you're a businessman, you don't want all those people who elk hunt every year, those people who bring their, you know, their cousin and brother and stuff and spend $10,000 in Colorado. You don't want them to not come. Agreed. And to me, it's more about the principle than it is about the, you know, it's like they came for the socialists, but I was not a socialist. They came for the, you know, street workers. But Kurt, you got to, I think you have to, when you're talking to a slightly different different group of people, I mean, if you're not a raving libertarian, a radical conservative like like Ben and I are, certainly, okay. Um, then you why gotta, do I care? Yeah, yeah you got a different perspective, but I do want to say, if you're a businessman, you really should care too, because this is this is about money coming into your state and people fleeing your state. If you go up to Cheyenne right now, mm, right. you go watch the the um, people fleeing Colorado and moving to oh, Wyoming. Yeah. I that looked is, at property in Wyoming to just be like, I could own my business and live in Wyoming and come to Fort Collins a lot. We're 15 and minutes hang away out at my Airbnb from getting a you know, 7% and not have pay to, increase. Right. Think yeah. about that. But, you know. but why are wh- the vast majority of people who are looking, it's based on the gun issue. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's absolutely true. Yeah, I mean, I there's tax fair. issues, there's expen- overall l- l- cost of living expenses, but. A lot of it is the gun issue. Yeah, yeah, I think there's. I some, mean, they're sure. basically no, and, and, majority, and that's wrapped up even in just liberty based, you know, yeah. well, general issues. I that's mean, what I would say is it's what, all liberty based. It's all about, it's about the lockdowns. It's about the mandatory vaccinations yeah. for state and medical employees. It's about a lot of those things as well. And, and yeah, it's it's the least populated state, is my understanding. I think there's only six hundred and what fifty thousand people in the whole state. Yeah, well, what, Alaska and, used to be less. Yeah, I think I think. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps so. Um, anyway. But but the point is, yeah, yeah. Man, less than a million people live in this, this state. There's not enough people to coalesce a government. So like, <laughs> right. even when they even when they have a government there, it's just there's just not enough to to do anything. And I think there's a lot of people that just really you know reside with that. But know? I don't. But I don't want to miss the fact that there are refugees who are leaving. Yeah. solely because of the gun laws. Yeah, sure. yeah now, case in point. Yeah. Now, Colorado, the last election just happened in Colorado. Democrats in the House now have <laughs> right. a veto-proof majority in the Colorado House. Right. And, and a bunch of crazies. And, yeah. Oh, like It's what? not like it's a bunch of moderate Democrats. Oh, it's a bunch yeah. of super crazies. No, no, it's wackadoos. Wackadoo, yeah. And, no and, offense to all the wackadoo Democrats <laughs> out there. Yeah. No no offense if you're a blazing communist. But... <laughs> right. um. But these are, but the woke crowd is in charge, and yeah, um, yeah. and in fact, there was a there was a meeting yesterday. It's going to be interesting for Polis to like be the re- one restraining the crazy. Yeah, how? Yeah, instead Actually, of leading the crazy. Jared Polis has been one of the restrainers yeah, of kinda. the craziness over the last couple of years. Him and a little bit, a little bit on a guns, bit. Yeah. and I'll give him credit for that. Um, that's why I think it was difficult. It would be very difficult to beat him, is because. He was in the middle ground there, but but I'm I'm a bit um, unless we win these lawsuits. Frankly, yeah. I I don't think any gun people, real hardcore gun people, will live in this state. Well, well think more. about I mean you know one of the reasons I, I signed up for this is that uh, and for and this Kurt, podcast for this well, organization. Uh, yes, for yes, yes, yes. No, the lawsuit. Uh, you know my myself oh, and Travis. Okay, yeah. are on there. Um, is. Uh, and it's something that, that you just mentioned uh, previously, Kurt. You said you said, yeah, I've, I've got friends there, and and yeah, I've got large capacity magazines. Well, that's fine if we have large capacity magazines that are pre ban, right? I, right. I was I was building AR-15s and buying AR-15 magazines from Magpul because Magpul was here in Colorado, out of Erie. Right. And, you know, there's kind of that local, you know, yeah. a, a yeah. business, and you want to support them. And so all of us, we bought you know t- tens if not hundreds of magazines. Uh, I haven't even counted. I've got a fair amount of magazines. And so I now cannot transfer those magazines to my sons. So I right. can, I can it's transfer. property rights issue. So I can transfer uh, my AR-15 over to my son. I cannot transfer the standard capacity magazine that goes in that AR-15 to my son. Mm. Therefore, by de facto, rendering that gun useless and restricting well, not you can put a smaller capacity magazine. Why it's not, that's not a standard. Been? Yeah, that's not a bullets? not a standard capacity magazine. There's still a <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> and, and yeah. let's yeah. in Colorado when when twenty in twenty thirteen when it 
when the mag ban was passed, and of course, that you was imagine Columbine I was, response, yeah. right? No, that was uh, that was Newtown. Columbine oh. was ninety nine. Okay. Um, so, um, wow, that long ago? Yeah, <laughs> seems like just the other day. <laughs> Should I pour you another bourbon? Yeah, well, um, yeah. one school shooting. Oh wait, got... can we make a bourbon pause here? Sure. Okay. Yeah, actually, we should take a little break. Actually, uh, well, we could. No, about the the, bre- the question oh, is the question about the bourbons. The question about the bourbon is have have you been able to taste the difference? Yes, for okay. sure. Um, so we the, have the we, Taylor's the winner. We have Yates Taylor single barrel. We have Weller Antique one hundred and seven, which is very nice. It's very yeah in your face. We have yeah we uh it's 107 proof the the E H Taylor's 100 proof we the have Bell Mead Bell Reserve. Mead Reserve which is 108 but I it's believe. smoother it's easier it I and think then we I have, like the Weller better and then we have Noah Mills uh actually is that uh, Noah Mill know, is what, about 110 was, proof I think maybe I was saying I need to I need to get my reading glasses I yeah. lost my reading glasses so, so I can't tell what proof it is I will say the antique 107 which came from my place is um there's a little bit left. I don't think that's the taste that it, when you open that barrel. Really? When you open that bottle. I really like that one. That's I, That's not as good as, as it is it when you, when you open fresh. it. Yep. Okay. And in fact, I've asked that question because I know people who gas their bourbons when you, you put a gas in the top of oh, a bourbon. Oh, like a nitro. Argon, yeah. It settles out and it removes the oxygen from mm. being able to touch the... So it doesn't oxidize. Yeah. So um, I've I was actually that pretty happy with this Noah Mill thing. It's really quite yeah. pleasant. Um. Sorry, but that E.H. Taylor, none of those are even on the same planet as the E.H. Taylor. I think the 107 is close, but, not, but you know, I would say E.H. Taylor than 107. I, what, I mean, I'd pay triple the price for that How e. much is the E.H. Taylor? Uh, now, boy, that single barrel's probably got to be, what, two, 200, give or take? On you the know? secondary on market. The, yeah. Because you can't buy more. it right yeah, now. Yeah, you just can't find it. Yeah. I, I think I got that as a, as a present from... Oh, well, thanks for sharing your fancy yeah. bourbon. I bought like a eighty dollar bottle of bourbon, like because I wanted to not like totally. Uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's quality. That's quality. You know. Uh. So okay. So I I'm just so, checking because I'm I'm I love the H Taylor. Yeah, that's your favorite. Oh, I'm looking. Favorite. I actually have a couple guys, including Taylor yeah. Rhodes, looking for that right now. Dudley will give you uh forty bucks, sixty bucks for the, rest, for the rest of that bottle, Ben. <laughs> 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 Um, okay, so we're actually going to take a little break here. Okay. The Loco Experience is sponsored by In Motion, providing next day delivery for local businesses. If you need anything delivered in Northern Colorado, In Motion's flat fee service is a great resource for your business. Delivering from the Wyoming border to Denver and anywhere in between, their clients range from small breweries to real estate companies. In Motion can deliver almost anything you can imagine. If this fits a need for your business, contact InMotion directly by emailing them at InMotionNoCo at gmail.com. That's I-N-M-O-T-I-O-N-N-O-C-O at gmail.com. And mention you heard it on the Loco Experience. You grew up listening to Rush Limbaugh? I did, man. I remember when Rush Limbaugh, I think it was 89, came to Fort Collins and did a pie sale. Do you remember that? <laughs> I actually, I actually, we lit dropped that pie sale. Man, my dad went, and I was seven years old, nah. and I I totally followed my dad. Oh, so your dad was a fairly conservative-minded yeah. person, even yeah, though he yeah, wasn't a gun a, shooter and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Grew up in a you know conservative Christian. Oh, that was family. one of my questions <laughs> was like if your gun stuff was related to the liberty stuff, or it grew at the same time, or or yeah, what? it's a, it's you a know, good it's a family it's a legacy. good question. Um, yeah, because again, I I didn't grow, grow up in a particularly political family or, right. or anything. It's just you know, Dad would, you know, as a uh, as a follower of Christ, and you know, he would get he get easily I shouldn't say easily that, that sounds negative, but you know, get just frustrated with the challenges of this world. Yeah, you know, and see the deterioration of this world right in front of his eyes. And so I just remember Dad, you know, um, Why oh are they doing gosh, this? Darn it, you yeah. know, and can't wait for Jesus to come back, and he'd storm out of the room, you know, and so. Um, and, and so you can't help but start to consider the things that you see, you know, on TV or that you're hearing on the radio or so, something. I mean, I remember as a kid, hearing Rush Limbaugh, you know, and we yeah. would drive our, our and he's like 19, the same kind of stuff. Yeah. 1982 Volvo. We would drive it to Louisiana to go see the family from Colorado. It was 20 hours in a car and you'd hear the, you know, boom, ding. You know the the little background noise to 
to Rush Limbaugh and and, and you listen to him. You know, I was yeah. seven, eight years old, and you start to just kind of interesting. I, I, don't I didn't know, have any of that personally. Kind of, really, like we had conversations and family and stuff like that, but I've never listened. Very, I yeah. have listened to Rush Limbaugh uh, five episodes or ten or something. Yeah, not, oh, not that I'm opposed. I just didn't do that. I, I yeah. met him one time. I mean, I'll never remember. There's this one thing I remember him saying. I was probably ten, and I remember him calling somebody a colossal jewel of gleaming ignorance. I believe is what he said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, so you kind of go, oh, this this guy sounds quote controversial, at the right? Time. Um, but uh, yeah, so so kind of grew up with that, and then it's you know, and, and one of the challenges that you know, me, even Dudley and I, we 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 discuss, and and Dudley said as much at, at the beginning, like first and foremost, we're, we're followers of Christ. You know, does not mm. mean that we're without sin. I mean, to, to the contrary, you know. <laughs> yeah, from, uh, I like to tell uh, people I'm a Christian because I need more grace than most yes. people. Yeah, we are the fat people that know we're fat and go to the gym. Like, you don't you don't get frustrated that there's fat people at the gym. No, those are the guys who need it, right? And so, um, and so you know, balancing out that that idea of who is Christ as, a, uh, mm. a, as somebody who cares, right, and and there's part of the liberal side of of the aisle that that thinks emotionally and from this sort of caring perspective. Yeah. But then does not necessarily think logically. You know, it's it's all it. Yeah. I shouldn't say all, but but you know, largely a, an emotional Feelings argument based. versus versus a logical argument. Argument and how do you how do you uh, uh, find out well, who, who, who Jesus is? He was neither conservative nor nor liberal. He was Jesus. You know, he's perfect. <laughs> right. So um, so that's well, what, and that's he's what we logos, for. right? Which is logic, yeah, which yep, is the word, yep. which is like reason in itself, right? And it's ultimate feeling, um, right? So, so you know, that's that's always a challenge. You know, how do you uh, uh, how do you balance that out in such a way that that um, you know? I, I still believe, like, guys, do I ever want to use a firearm against somebody? I I truly pray that that never happens. I hope that I never have Ooh, the opportunity. See, I kind of think it would be exciting to be in kind yeah, of the may, post maybe, uh, millennial you know? apocalypse kind yeah. of stuff. Zombie apocalypse. Right. Okay. I do yeah, fantasize about exciting. that, you know, but, but, but then I, but then it brings but me back society to society. And, and like, that's go, people. Yeah, dude, if I had to, if, you know, if somebody broke into my home and, and I had to, you know, put a bullet into them and they yeah. die on my stairs. Yeah. Dude, guy shouldn't have, you know come in and and tried to negatively impact yeah. my family, and right. and I will I will defend them. Boy, that was a family. euphemism. Negatively impact my family. Negatively <laughs> impact my family. All right, so, uh, but I bust the cap forbid. in the bitch. Ha- <laughs> right. No, sorry, so I, so I take the opinion of uh, you know I, I pray God may that never happen, so that I never have yeah. to find that out. Yeah, I don't want to. And I don't hold it against anybody who has. Uh, to, to, yeah. to the contrary, I think uh, I think you know some that sometimes that's one of the greatest acts of nobility is yeah. to defend others. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, s- sinful people make their decision, and uh, sometimes that's to commit some pretty in, in, intolerable acts, and they and, need to be called out uh, sometimes physically for them. And but. by and by doing so, they might have to take the asphalt temperature challenge. <laughs> <laughs> What's the asphalt? Uh, it's a guy named a uh, guy from uh, Active Self Protection. Oh, um, like he breaks here, down all the sh- all the shootings in the asphalt. He's like he's like yeah, that guy took the asphalt temperature challenge. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that guy hit the his, his cheek was pressed on the asphalt for about thirty seconds. He knew how cold it was. Once, once he was warm. dead. Yeah, um, that one. Oh, yeah, asphalt um, temperature. What's the temperature of asphalt? Yeah, no, I get um, it. it could be hot. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to ask two more questions about. Nagger, uh, Colorado Gun Armor Geo. Yeah, go ahead. And then we're going to get into faith, family, politics, and then we're going to wrap it up and get you guys Love out it. of here. Love it. Um, first, like, what's the, the future hold for your organization mm. for for Nagger, National Association for Gun Rights, especially? And then what's like the future of gun rights? And like, what do you see coming down the pike? We talked a little bit about the Supreme Court stuff already and maybe some yeah. of the the state laws that are going to be likely turned the other way or maybe who knows hopefully yeah right like talk to me about what you see coming down the pike in that space because it's it's been very choppy right you've had some big wins you and the nra working together (laughs) some (laughs) big wins and you you know there's been some some significant drawbacks in 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 rights over the last few years there are other organizations and governors of america they're good friends of ours um there, there are certainly state level organizations or 
friends of ours, but like NRA didn't do anything on Bruin. Um, and there are a great number of uh, just activists who do it lone wolf, although I like to tell people who are lone wolfing it and do that. It's easy to be picked off lone wolfing it. Yeah. Um, you got to operate in a, in a crowd um, mm. as a team. Um, but, um, and that's tough because, uh, you know, liberty right. minded people don't like to operate <laughs> right. in a team. We like to just do our thing. And, uh, so, you know, I think uh, the concern is um, for woke states. I'm going to keep using that mm. term yeah. because it's not just guns. Yeah, what is woke? Because my Rotary Club had a whole thing the other day where one of our members referred to woke in a derogatory way and the other member was like well woke i think of as being like sensitive to the realities of class struggles or uh race struggles or things like that read it straight out of das kapital right Uh, yeah he was a marxist um the the term the term woke i mean i like to uh, chuckle at it because of course that's what i try to do is wake people up um you like jp sears <laughs> yeah uh, but a- awake but not woke yeah. um but but i'm not a uh you know i think um drag queen story hour t- giving giving seven-year-old kids dildos um is a little off um uh, it's a little more than a little off would yeah and um and doing things counterproductive if we want healthy children and families in the future. Yeah, I'm, um, you know, I, it's not, it's not that I think don't think that that people of a different race have um, don't have struggles. It's, uh, I think, defining everything by a racial struggle um, can be um, very counter, class, very class counterproductive. Class. Yeah, but um, but the 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 woke world of gender politics is what really drives me crazy um you know i i don't want to i don't got sidetracked there we can yeah you know let's do it but tell me about the future like from a gun yeah i I think the because i guess what you're saying is that this woke stuff is a very distinct challenge to maintaining the freedoms and rights especially free speech like you're not just a second amendment organization (laughs) anymore like you were now you're becoming a First Amendment. We've always been very deeply tied to the First Amendment. We've had, but it's mm-hmm. more we clear spend, now. We spend a lot of law, uh, money on legal side, um, defending the rights to talk to um, our members, talk to gun owners, and by definition, anybody who wants to talk to them. It's a marketplace of ideas, and and may the best ideas win. And and you know what? It, uh, I don't think government has any, any role in restricting that. Um, I'm very critical of churches. I think churches have basically abdicated their ability to speak into the uh, public square. Yeah. And they hide behind a tax status and shame on you. Yeah. Um, uh, um, Do you know Douglas Wilson? The mm-hmm. blog and May blog podcast? No, I don't think so. Oh, you would like him. He's from Idaho. Moscow. Oh, Moscow. Yeah. yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, check it out. You'll yeah. like it. Yeah. So, so um, I think where we're headed um, in our country is... But you're right. There's few. Um, it there there is a very deep concern that we are headed to um, not a cold civil war, but a hot civil war. Yeah, I think we're in a cold civil war right now. There's a there very much. And I mean, people don't want to say it because it's very uncomfortable that that somehow we're everything is fine. We're just going to be fine. We have disagreements. Um, but at some point, you push people too far, and um, you know a. a, a a veteran who served in Fallujah is told now because he went and saw a mental health counselor that he can't own a firearm. You know, right. what, you know what that guy does? He shoots you if you come and take his guns. <laughs> right. Those guys are not, and and that is, that's, that's a very, very bad so, spiral down. So you're predicting defeats on the side of freedoms in the future that turn into a hot. Is that fair? I don't, I don't want to say I predict it, um, but it would be an idiot not to that's think that. That's the direction we're headed right that, now. That, that's the, not the direction we're heading. I think we're, we've become more and more polarized, and, um, and that's not, I'm not controversial to say, but, um, but I do believe uh, there's a, a growing class of people who, frankly, want to write off, on, on my side, I say on the very, very conservative side, who want to say that everything is a conspiracy 
the election's a conspiracy. It was all rigged. Um, I don't buy any of that crap. Yeah. Um, but, uh, um, and that's somebody I who's- I buy it a little bit, but not all the way. Yeah, I, because I, I think most of the people are just like, they like the government goodies, and it's easy to sign up for that right. kind of style of thing until it turns wrong. I think the big, the big, the direction that that of course we hope is that um, the Second Amendment actually gets enough traction now with the Bruin decision um, that at least for the for um, coming future that um, that frankly city councils, county commissions, including our county here in Larimer, right. which I live in. Um, rethink this, you know what? We can't just do whatever we want. Ma- majority just doesn't make law. Yeah. You actually you actually have to go abide by the Constitution. Um, as I was saying earlier, finally, <laughs> you know, the Constitution, which has been sitting in, a, in the National Archives, um, means something. It's going to get exercised a little bit. And it's going to be exercised, and we are a constitutional republic, Uh yeah, I, I think they we're de- not a democracy. We're not a right. democracy. The, the all the wolves don't get a vote on who to have for dinner yeah. when the lamb is the minority. <laughs> right. Um. And so, and so, um. I think what we're going to end up with is, at least in the future here, is uh, some great decisions. I also think um, it's possible that there's a frustration, uh, certainly amongst the Biden administration, to pack the court. And, oh right! And now they, they'll have a tough time in the U.S. Senate right now. They won't be able to do it with the U.S. Senate. The numbers didn't change enough uh, for them. Yeah, well, for them to God. do it, but doesn't mean they won't be able to do it in the future. Um, is to when I say packed court, expand like, the court, expand it to fifteen, so they don't, so then they have a majority. Yeah, which is okay. Whatever. That's like that's like starting a hockey game, and and saying, I ah, guess what we're going to take another well, defenseman, it's like getting rid of the filibuster is the same kind of logic well put kurt it's like uh this is the most short-sighted decision i could well you know what and 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 to kind of parlay uh, off of that is is uh, i don't see the second amendment maybe this is a naive you know position i'll see the second amendment as a as a left wing or right wing issue for sure i i'm um and i'm always i I truly am a little confused historically it was the left wing that feared the government right right and so i'm I'm confused as to why it's a right wing issue um i think that everybody should distrust their their government and it's um (laughs) oh i just thought of something clever i want to share it yeah please do we used to be like maybe 50 or 100 years ago government was like a necessary evil and now it's more like an evil necessary (laughs) yeah no yeah good point and and (laughs) so if if i could kind of separate and 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 you know i'm this is this is uh, this is this is really high level but if i can i could say how do you define a conservative versus a liberal i would say you know a a liberal believes that government is the answer and a conservative believes that that i am the answer and um and that's that's a very you know simplistic way of 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 putting it first you have to be responsible for yourself from a conservative viewpoint right you know and, and you're and then you can dig deeper into that. I'm I'm very skeptical of of the human nature. I mean, I I understand as again as as a follower of Christ that people are fundamentally evil, not fundamentally good, right? And so you can also look yeah. into liberalism, totally. conservative. I've, yeah, you know, we've talked about that. And so um, I just I don't trust people in large groups making good decisions. It's time and time again they tend to make very bad decisions. And um, and so I, I back to the point. I I don't see. I think that liberals right now should be incredibly pro Second Amendment, more so than ever before. Because what? well, what happens if and when the the political spectrum shifts? Yeah, right. Yeah. So so when that when when that pendulum swings the it was other an way, thing like the panic when Trump started changing some of the state tax laws oh, and there stuff were like so that. So like many the executive that privilege, guns. or not the executive privilege, but just the the increasing power of the executive office, which had been like increasing since Bush won, really, but got like stupid during Obama. It was great most of that time when Clinton and Obama were in office, and then when Trump started using executive power, they were like. Oh wait, we can't have a president having all this power. Right, right. Oh yeah. I actually had a neighbor come to me, um, and hardcore lefty neighbor who said, "Dudley, do you still teach firearms courses?" And I said, "Well, not really, but you know, I, I'm happy to help people." 
And she said, I'm just worried about those Trump people right. coming, coming to my house and, and oh, creating problems. This is, this is during this oh, yeah. summer of 2020. Get your gun. Granted, get your gun. Take and, advantage you know, of your Second Amendment. I love yeah. to tell, I love to say that, that um, you can't bash an armed gay. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? And more power to you. Do, um, anybody who's in the position of, of being vulnerable, um, you know, Sam Colt made everybody equal. Yeah, so, God made man. Sam Colt made them equal. Yeah, right. yeah. Was it yeah. Dave Chappelle that said the Second Amendment is there just in case the first one don't work out? Yeah, you know. <laughs> yes. Said, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, I always advocate. Hey, look. Um, during the summer of 2020, I I watched as people were coming into gun shops, and I was yeah. we were watching it very carefully. It was not your traditional gun owner. Right. They didn't look. They didn't have weeds in their teeth and they weren't wearing a coveralls the, these were like bernie Dorky stickers on their cars like, yeah. Rain, and rainbows and yeah yeah interesting. and um and i love it uh, fantastic <clears throat> take up your second amendment take take hold of your because second then amendment. maybe you'll take up your first absolutely <laughs> maybe maybe you'll actually care about uh limiting government that, now, that's really the issue now i don't don't get me wrong i don't want the communists to run anything um, but no, they all have the rights it. to personal defense, and and although I don't really think our founding fathers ever wrote the Second Amendment thinking of personal defense, they didn't mm. think of hunting, they didn't think of personal defense. They meant keep the government off of crushing us. bulwark against tyranny. Yeah. And yeah. and I know that that sounds terrible, but no, I, I mean, <laughs> to it me sounds that's 100%. like hundred percent. And but because I get people to come to me and say, "Oh, that's so silly. What are you going to hold off a?" a, a an, a modern army with with small Ask arms. the Taliban in Afghanistan, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They I were, had a few friends those, over there. Yeah, yeah, those booger eaters were using freaking Dude, must. We, we just gave them a bunch of Black Hawk helicopters. Yeah, apparently it works. They, but they were using. Uh, right. They were they're actually using Old powder. Uh, Eighteen sixty three Enfields. Heck, I have one. Um, Marco Telling got it for me uh, yes. when he was over there. You've been to Grunt Fest before. Um, I actually it's, brought the machine guns to Grunt Fest. I remember, yeah. So, so, um, so is my Pinsgauer. So, um, so, but like the the funny part was when the Ukrainian Let's battle see, happened. Ooh, they're going back for more. Yeah, oh, yeah. finish it off, man. Oh, okay, well, I will if, if I'm gonna do ben, some Ben's going to be more tailored. Yeah, I went. Do you want to do, do the Weller? No, no, go, go for the Weller. Well, let's finish this off. Come on. Yeah, and whatever. I you, whatever you want. Weller. I'll have Come more. On, though, so it, it you of, that you like that? Huh? I like that one. Yeah. I want to hear what your notes are. That one's hard Dude, not to like. you're going to pour it all on me? Yeah, there you go. Yep, it's gone. Yeah. Heard some joy in that well. I had to walk home tonight. Yeah, exactly. So I had a, uh, again, uh, Thomas Massey called me when the Ukrainian um, yeah. war happened. And he said, Dudley went, how can we take up a collection of Americans' AR-15s? Right. And, and donate he them said, to the and it would donate to Ukrainian citizens not, yeah, not the government military, not the government yeah let's just arm those bastards and um and make it really painful for the russians i think that and cool, and, actually. and thomas and i were like conspiring for several weeks we're like how can we do this and i i tickled every contact i had and like it would be impossible because Zelensky doesn't want to have a bunch of his citizens to have weapons uh he does does he okay oh yeah and oh, yeah. and and it's some of it happened but we could because he seems out like an it. authoritarian too no offense because just anti-big government man. right yeah. i have an anti-power concentration you know yep. and yep. he seems like he wants to have all the power instead of other people having all the power i i, but I don't follow godspeed enough. good on him though because frankly he's yeah he, he's we couldn't what he needed to do. We couldn't figure out how to do it, and and because <laughs> right. mostly because That's the Pentagon was going to stop you, um, but but of course I thought we could probably amass a hundred thousand AR-15s um, oh, as an sure. organization, oh, dude, in about a sure. week to I'm donate. Sure. But it would almost be like World War II. Some people were like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "In World War II, <laughs> when the British were worried uh, after Dunkirk and they were back on the island." And they were worried about the Germans coming and invading right, at, during, right. during the Battle of Britain and launching an invasion of the British Isles. We sent we sent a totally disarmed British citizenry. Americans sent, I think, eight hundred thousand really? firearms. Oh wow! 
many of them had plaques on the guns. They would put little brass plaques that said, Donated give them, by... kill a Nazi, give them hell by, <laughs> by you know, Joe Blow in Shadron, Nebraska. Right. That and, so cool. and, um, and to me, that's the... That's American. That's the basis right there. of it all for you. Is just we oh, we yeah. need to have a world that's free enough that the government can't like make you do stuff. We every much. government official on the planet should should um, sweat bullets anytime they're thinking about doing something that violates a a natural right because they might get shot. So I wanted to think about the before we go into the proper faith family politics okay. uh, when you were talking about two. Two uh, wolves and a sheep voting. This uh, free school lunch for kids in Colorado that just passed by an overwhelming majority. Did you follow that? Yeah, I voted like, against that one. Right. Well, it's basically. I'm sorry, tax me? No, just take care of your own kids. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, here, we're only going to tax people that make more than three hundred or $350,000 a year because I was to buy the lunches for all the rest out. of the kids. And so there's only a few people that make more than $350,000 a year, so they're obviously opposed, generally. But then who else is opposed? Yeah, I mean, I almost think that only people who made more than $350,000 should have been allowed to vote on that. Right? Agreed. <laughs> I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, I, 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 like, agree. I, I believe that only landowners, you know, people who are property owners uh, should, should vote. On should property vote. Taxes? Well, I, right. Period. Period. Uh, oh. I mean, if you don't have property, don't vote. Otherwise, it, you're just going to vote it for yourself. Sounds um, like I'm, you're kind of racist against wow. people who don't own their houses, Ben. <laughs> I, d- I didn't know that home ownership was a racial issue. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, no, but seriously, I'd like to have you expand on that. Let's uh, let's start it right now. We're going to get into the yeah uh, the closing segments. Faith, family, politics. We'll call this a political no, it's, issue. It's right? always like, you know. I think Dudley uh, summed it up easier. Uh, yeah, pr- pretty pretty simply earlier when he said. Uh, what, what, what is it when, when all the vo- the wolves vote to eat the lamb because the lamb is the who's only for one? dinner? Yeah, who's right. because the lamb's the one for dinner. Gee, who's going to lose that? And and so uh, it it I don't know. It doesn't take a there would be a, a more rocket scientist owners, to figure honestly. this out. Like right? that's all about incent- incentives too. Like I was just thinking to myself that if if all the non property owners voted and said, well, I think all the property owners should send everybody else a thousand dollars a year. Or whatever. Yeah. Well, then, before right. too long, there would be a whole bunch of property owners. Yeah. Like, and, if you made voting obligatory on owning property, so many people would own I don't, property. I don't know instead. if it's property owners. I, I've been. I don't believe this. Let's make everything really easy to vote. And don't kid yourself. I know. It's largely been the Republican county clerks who hold a vast majority of the county clerk positions in the state. Mm. They're the ones who've been forever saying we need to vote by mail. We need to make it real easy. We want everyone to vote. I don't want everyone to vote. I really don't. Now, first of all, I believe I everybody should vote. Yeah. I believe right. everybody should have the right to vote. I believe you should have the, but it should be difficult. You should actually have to do some things. I don't want people who just like, oh, I saw a commercial. I'm voting. Right. And that's the oh, general I'm voting sentiment. on my phone. Right. I got a ballot uh, in the mail. Like, yeah, that's the general sentiment. I, I, nope. I can't. I vote right here. I can't nope, tell you that I've, that I've spent you know a, a, a lifetime considering whether it's specifically property ownership that defines one's ability to write but something to, to vote should almost be a qualifier. But it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a general idea. Maybe it's like a if, super it is, license thing. You get a regular is, vote if you're just a regular person, right. but if you're more it's educated idea, or if, smarter, it's painful you get to you. Triple votes. Vote early. Vote often. Yeah, it's the idea that if it's painful for you, you should be the one that votes on it. If yeah. it's easy for you to inflict pain on another person, it should not be easy for you to vote on it. And that's the general. Yeah. I think I, I think that even Dudley's getting at is that is that there should there should be a challenge to have to overcome to 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 go and and vote general gifts from the government. You know, back Tax to pay. myself. Yeah. That I that I lean against government. Well, in this know, case secret that I, that's taxpayer. In this case that I brought up, it you know the the people that make three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year now are buying free school lunches for the people that make two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And that's a just year. A, that's a, just a, you know an arbitrary tax against business owners because I've been I, I, you and me both know as as bankers how many you know hundreds of tax returns did we see where somebody quote made a million dollars on paper right. And yeah, but these guys were taking home personal salaries of roughly a hundred grand right. back, you know, ten right. years ago. And that business needed that yeah. money to be able to. The grow. other nine hundred grand was shoved back in the business, 
and um mm. and they were paying taxes on these they didn't they didn't have that right because of the structure of an llc and a single taxation entity they're, yeah. they're they're quote you know they, they make eight hundred fifty thousand right. dollars a year and I mean, they're pulling in a hundred grand. My dad's got a ten thousand acre farm right now. Him and my brother are together. Oh, he must be rich. I bet he makes a million. He is kind of rich now. But for the first fifteen years of his farm, every dollar that that farm made was reinvested into the farm, and we ate free school lunch. Yeah, you know, because we didn't we lived on his motorcycle mechanic salary. It's, and it's just the same notion. It's just yeah, and and, and again, so so either everybody pays a flat flat tax i mean you you want to get rid of uh tax accountants and tax lawyers uh you know there's too much of a lobby ag- against it yeah i'm sure we're gonna lawyers. be really uh really popular here but uh flat tax you know it's a very yeah. very simple if you, make, if you make if you make a fair tax that's a yeah there you go that's only fair. if i only buy that if if we're actually replacing it because unfortunately a lot of the totally. fair tax people are like anything to get a fair tax let's just start with a fair tax right then we'll slowly amp it up and yeah. reduce the income tax yes yeah, no screw up. you <laughs> i ain't doing right. i'm not full that it. shell game it's this, it's this. yeah no, you're, you're right because then then you have both it's it's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like gasoline taxes it's like right. well this is just a small nine temporary. cents tax. Temporary nine for, cents for tax. Your, yes, for, for your now. for I twenty five. You know, like, do I twenty five still ever, sucks? Ever tried to repeal a tax? So we have a bill in Congress right now trying to repeal the federal excise tax on firearms and ammunition. Oh, you know that today when you buy a firearm, it's eleven percent more expensive on the fiftieth. Uh, yeah, firearm and more. I've never bought a firearm, so I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've lost them all in a Lo- boating, boating accident. Tragic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, yeah, uh, Andrew Clyde is from Georgia, is a House member who's running the bill, and um, and the bill basically gets rid of this eleven percent federal mm. excise tax, which you should have put it in the omnibus. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, you don't actually see because, of course, it's done paid right. by the manufacturer. Right. It's just passed on to you. You just well, don't per know. Unit, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you I can tell it. you right now, as a firearms manufacturer, if we had an eleven percent decrease in our cost, you know what we would do? Decrease our retail price by eleven percent. Yeah, nine yeah, percent. Okay. I would recommend. No, no. Do you sell firearms yes, to yeah, others? on the you t- need some yeah. margin, uh, man? Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, a banker. You but but you see the point. It does. Right. You don't. Yeah, no, it's but, cost. It's an inflation. Nobody just all of a sudden makes eleven percent more, and they're all happy because the the guy down the street decreases to only ten percent. And then the next guy decreases to only nine percent, and then eventually it just it washes out. Yeah. Because the free market is you. is a lot more efficient. Than ben, the, you yeah. you sell firearms out overseas, right? Internationally. No, we don't. Huh? Yeah, we don't. But you don't. You have an exporter. Yeah, so someone else does. Yeah. But you could call yourself an international arms dealer. That's true. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Although, fair enough. Yeah, we do have dealers. Hey, fair enough. Yes, we do have dealers outside of the United States. I see what you're getting See, I, I've always uh, wanted that on my resume. Yeah. I am an international, international arms, arms dealer. dealer. You yeah. could have been traded for Brittany Griner. Yeah. <laughs> no, Nicolas Cage is my uh, hero, you know, <laughs> Lord of War, right? Um, <laughs> Dudley, I want to hear what you say when I, when I ask about faith, family, politics in general. But first, I want to talk about your faith. Like, uh, where did that come from? Was your folks, they were... Christians before they even met each other? No, um, my mom was. Uh, I grew up in a divorced family in South okay. Dakota, and, and um, you know, I, I accepted the Lord when I was in sixth grade, and but um, it wasn't really real yeah. until I got a plane crash in 1993. Okay. Small plane crash, and, and um, uh, I was in a, I had a a small business uh, with some family members, and we were in a very um, per- a long story, precarious. but very precarious position. Okay, uh, crashed a small plane and should have died. Um, wow. I mean, I know we we were in we stalled at about three hundred feet. Oh no! Wow! Yeah, so we should have been dead. Is this your local experience or no? Uh-huh. The, well, the local experience is the craziest experience of your lifetime but let's just tell this story it's transitional now. for sure yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a faith story now yeah yeah and um i remember it was back when i was single and i remember so um, you're like 22 or 24 or something whatever three um you well, graduated college in 89 so i was old 25 26 whatever yeah. and i went to um uh and i i had a golden retriever at the time who was my family right and and he was over at my sister's house, so because um, I was leaving, supposed to be leaving town. Well, we crashed the plane, 
And this I'm, is you. This we is, is we is who. Uh, uh, the owners of the business, which is my brother-in-law and my cousin. Okay. And and uh, down at Front Range Airport, which is the cutout of DIA, if you yep. know where that is, southeast yep. of DIA. And that's where we had our hangar. And um, and I I went. <laughs> the weird part is I'm very good in like emergency circumstances. I'm, yeah. I keep my I'm a cool him. I keep my myself, cool. Yeah. I um. And and the other two guys in the plane, my brother in law and who's still one of my best friends and my my cousin, uh, we he they were freaked out and um and we literally um had the doctors look at us and you know, and everybody's looking at us like you should be dead. So you stalled out and you fell from the sky basically. We we actually emerged from a cloud bank at about a seventy degree pitch. Um I think 170, 180 miles an hour in a Viking and, um, and, and crashed it on the tail, got the nose up yep. high enough, crashed it on the tail in a, yep. in a cornfield. Whoa. And, um, like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yes. Full of fuel. Whoa. Oh, and, dude, and I remember it because it, it had to, those fuel tanks off and, and it had, the, behind. it had those canopy, it had a sliding canopy and, um, and, we hit. We landed. I was sitting right seat. My brother in law was an Air Force pilot, was it was the pilot in command, and we hit. We hit our heads like like hit the on the panel. Yeah. And my cousin was in the back, and and he he was an air EMP, a mechanic, aircraft yeah. mechanic, and he st- he just immediately screamed, fire! And 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 kicked out this little triangular window in the back seat. I still don't know how I'm. I was the smallest of the guys. I don't know how we got out. Right. But we all got out of that triangular window um, as fast as you can possibly imagine, dove out and, and ran, you know, 100 yards away, and we didn't end up having a fire. My brother-in-law was smart enough to land it, smash it on the tail, and before he came to the ground, he had turned the the electrical, master electrical connection off. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. So there was no spark. And... Um, otherwise, I mean, you know, so you could just about, smell it. Uh, where's Jesus in this conversation? We went, um, we went home. Well, everybody, um, went home at this point and <laughs> like I, somebody came and picked you up and you got this wrecked plate in a cornfield. Where is yeah, this Well, the NTSB showed up. It was yeah. several hours and, um, and the, the paramedic, the ambulance came and checked us out and make sure everything was okay. And of course I was handling things. I was like, you know, yeah. check them out. Everything's okay. Yeah. And, and then, um, and we, and I went home to my little place and over by Cherry Creek mall. And I remember just laying down and, uh, like, and the adrenaline had finally drained off. And I remember just playing through my head because when we stalled, I could see the the propeller kind of windmill, mm. and I could it, we were in the clouds, but I could mm. tell we were stalling. Mm. Mm. You you had that feel, yeah. and um, and all that ran through my mind is, who's gonna take care of my dog, um, and who am I gonna see? What what is gonna happen to me right now? Because I'm dead. I'm, I mean, right. we're, I'm, I don't even see the ground, I'm, yeah, but I know we're much, stalling. You know at, you've been flying enough. And we just, we knew. just took off. That was badass. I news. know we were dead. And, um, and I just thought we're dead and who am I going to see? And we, and so when I went home, I just couldn't sleep. It was, um, you know, it was, that was a question going through my head at the time and, uh, over and over and over again was, um, I don't know what I would have seen. I don't know who, whether I, you know, I, I would have woken up and been in a tunnel and I had no clue. And I, which tells me, yep, uh, you better change your life. And, Mm. and, and, um, so that was an epiphany, no doubt. And so we, you know, it was, it was a time in my life in which I, I got very deeply involved in a startup church in Denver and, Mm. and, um, um, and you know, I hadn't been living a life. I'd I'd been working in politics for the leading Christian in the U.S. Senate, um, you know, for many years, and 
And so that's how I was known. And yeah. And I'm oh gee, of course I'm yeah, a Christian. I'm, uh, yeah, you know, I, I work, work for, for Bill Armstrong. I worked for Thrivent for a while, and and those <laughs> Christians know how to party when it comes time for the conference and right. whatever right. you know. Right. So um. So anyway, it was it was just a a change in life, and and yeah. um. Um, I've been deeply involved in a lot of different churches. And, 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 and what do you do? Where do you go to church nowadays? I go to Clearwater, which is literally right in my neighborhood. Um, and uh, Which is Windsor, too? Or no, no, no. I live, you've been to my house. Fork, oh, yeah. Duh, it's so, South Fork yeah, Falls. Yeah, Fork Falls. Yeah, Fork Where's Falls. Clearwater? I don't know where that's at. It's uh, LeMay and Drake. Oh. Southeast corner of yeah. LeMay and Drake. Yeah. It um, used to be a different first name. Christian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Used yeah, yeah. yeah used I've done different. some events there and different things over the years. Big facility. Stuff. Yeah, nice, nice um, building. Used to be deeply involved in... Uh, Non-denominationally kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Used to be in deeply involved in Eaton E. Free um, out in Eaton, which is a great church. A lot yeah. of friends there still. A lot of yeah. good friends there. Um, um, and frankly, it um, it's kind of the, the center of, of conservative activism, too. Interesting. Um, but, Eaton is? Oh, yeah. Uh, that church is. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Has two. St- they're, they're buddies with Mark and his church over in Alt there, I imagine. Well, I mean, Mark's church, uh, High Plains, is is uh, very, very new comparatively. Oh, right. So, yeah. Oh, interesting. Right. So, interesting. And small. Yeah. Uh, but, but, um, but he got, like, into the state, like, shutdown conversation and stuff like that. Actually, I consider him yeah, he filed a lawsuit with an attorney, Barry Arrington, who's our current right. attorney on, on the case that Ben's a plaintiff on, um, and brought up the Supreme Court on on the the whole uh, uh, COVID shutdown on right, churches. Right, So um, He's like, we only have 20 people that come to our church, so we should be able to be open. But the, uh, yeah, there's it's a great church. I, I t- tend to think that churches that don't talk about important things in the public square and i'll i'll use this as if you if you looked at the u.s supreme court decision on abortion this summer and and you didn't talk about that in your church as a pastor you should quit yeah you're if you didn't stand up in front of your church and say say i would agree with that i'll say this is not only a victory um for us but it's also a starting point. It's time to start fighting because all the Supreme Court did was say, yes, you can restrict them. Now it's time to go to your state legislatures yeah. and restrict them, restrict abortion. You can't murder children. And and um, ch- pastors who didn't do that, they should quit. No, and separation of church and state is to keep the state out of the church, not to keep the church out of the state. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I, I think we've, we've, we've kind of, you know, backed off as as you've mentioned before you know Dudley sort of this ah, I'm scared of my you know my tax right. status right or right. I don't you know wanna, what I don't want to chase ta- any of my big donors off that's where I right. say become taxable and and operate at a loss you no, know? no <laughs> ch- yeah, right. but guess what no church has ever lost its tax status by talking about politics hmm. interesting Fine. doesn't exist Ben were you like a Christian the whole time I don't think we Yeah, really you know, I think we had a, I think we had a slight discussion, you know, last uh last time episode number 6. Yeah. Um but uh but yeah, obviously grew up in a Christian home, uh parents, you know, strong believers and um, no doubt period in your life, no like epiphany moment, no plane crashes, nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, no you. no no plane crashes. I I'd, I'd say that my my faith has been a has been a journey and that it has been tested over the years um you know through through slow strain and challenging yep. you know positions um it, it's not a it's not a faith that has been untested um and 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 sometimes i think that uh that, that living in a very uh materialistic society where i have no needs right. is one of the biggest challenges challenge to yeah. your faith um well and you're a high income earning guy now maybe you make dividends from your gun company maybe not but your salary at NG is probably higher yeah, than when you, you know, were a banker, even. Yeah, sure. It it, it becomes you challenging. probably need to raise Cameron just so you. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Just you know, I'll, t- I'll let him know. <laughs> but can but, I hire you there, Kurt, to work on my board? Yeah, uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm uh, good no, for that. it becomes it becomes you know ch- challenging to to feel that you have a need for your soul when you have no needs in your life. Yeah. And uh, boy, I hope that doesn't fall on deaf ears. Um, and and I'm I'm not trying to be flippant about it, but. But if uh, if if you believe hmm. that your own actions and your own work 
will will fulfill uh, everything that you need in this life, then all of a sudden you don't think about the next life. Mm-hmm. And I'm reminded of the scripture that says, you know, what is uh, how good is it that a man, you know, gain the whole world yet lose his soul? Yeah. And um, I don't have the whole world. I have a lot of friends who have a lot more mm-hmm. of the world than I right, do. For uh, sure. But but I want for nothing. Um, I have everything that I need. I have a family and I have, I have great kids. I have, you know, a home. I got a mortgage on my house. I, you know, I live the American dream. I, yeah. I can eat steak on the weekends if that's what I decide to do. Um, and uh, I can go Tuesday. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, I can go, you know, hang out with Dudley and we can talk about, you know, go and take a, a, a trip on you river know, to, cruise, European to, river to, cruise. To Europe. And, and, um, and I, I realized that I'm, I'm the top echelon top 1%er. of the, yeah, the percentage of the percentage that has ever existed in, in all of society. I remind my children regularly, the kids we live as King, we live better than Kings and Queens from a hundred years before through all of existence right no 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 one else had air conditioning steak on the weekends could you know pop a a, a bag of potato chips and sit down and watch right. internet make you know, popcorn videos. in the microwave kids do you want chocolate did Wait. you know that 500 years ago you couldn't have chocolate anywhere in the world and yet we're like cinnamon oh, another Cin- right cinnamon Sa- cinnamon, cinnamon saffron oh, uh, it did it but it, but it came from india had to come all the way across the world, so the only the kings of Europe right. had had saffron. Yeah, they got a sprinkle of it once in a dude, while. I, I was even thinking uh, about like you yeah. know, um, <laughs> I have this joke with my wife that uh, you know if I ever if I ever make a million dollars, like cash, like ever, like ever have, have a million dollars, yeah, ready yeah, I have to go. a million dollar transaction that I'm gonna buy a a a, 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 a wheel of Parmesan cheese <laughs> because I love Parmesan cheese and I think that's ridiculous to buy a whole wheel of it. It's like what. Three yes. grand or something like that. So I'm, I'm there. Have a, uh, yeah, I've told Dilly. I'm gonna, I'll your come. Basement, if right, I ever have a shave a little bit up. Yeah, if I ever have a cheese party, it's because I've made a million dollars in one transaction. <laughs> and so anyway, but the point <laughs> is, is that that doesn't really matter. I can go to Safeway right now and get was it Parmigiano Re- Reggiano as much the, as you want, the, whatever the official stuff for you know nine dollars, and I can have half a pound of it, and I can eat prosciutto and drink, right. uh, you know, um, uh, w- wine from France. And enjoy E.H. You Taylor. live like a king now. I live like even a king. Even as an upper middle class type of person. I could be lower middle, class. Middle middle class even. And I could buy this E.H. Taylor for $100. Right. And, or, or, or have prosciutto, yeah. salami, or you know whatever from, right. from King Supers. And so um, and so I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, take that lightly that, um, that I'm incredibly um, blessed and uh and so it's, it's and the simple things are worth the most oh yeah and so it's incredibly important that you that you have your faith tested at different different points and um and that you consider your faith and and consider your values and your your position in life so that when it's tested um you've you've gone through those mental exercises and and yeah. you know and I mean, you have a case, well, case in point, offered. this, yeah, this, this, uh, this lawsuit that we're filing against, yeah, the, against the state, you know, my Is it faith related. No, no I, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, you know, that, that Jesus cares about my 30 round magazine. That's, that's not, no, but I want to hear about this lawsuit because um, Dudley's mentioned it a couple of times already. And yeah, I mean, really it was, it was a challenge with, so let's just transition to politics. Yeah, sure. Shall we? Yeah, no. And, and, and yeah, so I'll take, I'll take the faith base and then, and transition it in. But, but, you know, my wife and I, uh, you know, Katie, well, wonderful woman and and she's you know she uh, obviously you know women are a little bit more concerned about stability and security consistency and security and that sort of thing and so we had this this discussion and she's like yeah man i don't, I don't want your name to be dragged you know through the mud I, I don't want you to to have to lose out on on business or you know or 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 value or or you know your reputation for something and and um, is having a thirty round magazine a faith based thing? No, it's it's a liberty based thing that I I think is is important, and I think I can, um, I, I think it um, it ties so into some faith based issues. Up a level, like what's this lawsuit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the the lawsuit we're we're suing the state of Colorado um, under this uh, that oh under Dudley, Brown. Yeah, yeah, well, what or you know, Dudley discussed earlier was in 2012 that some laws were passed yeah. that they were enacted yeah. in, yep. on January 1st of 2013. Made the 15 round magazine it illegal. Said you here. cannot have a. I want to. And so you're claiming I'm clarif- harm. I'm clarifying this: a standard capacity, not high capacity. A standard capacity 
AR-15 magazine, which is 30 rounds. Okay? Right, okay. Standard capacity. It's very important. Yeah. And, and, and a, or a standard capacity Glock magazine. So they said pistol magazines cannot have more than 10 rounds. Okay. Right? So wow. I can't have a Glock ma- all the Glock magazines that I that I bought for you. Remember, I got very excited about guns when I was twenty one. Right, so right. this is well, two thousand three, and I, you know, so from two thousand three until two thousand thirteen, um, you know, mass, you know, multiple, you know, what they consider large capacity magazines now right. that were standard capacity magazines. Right. So, so Kurt, today, if you went to try to buy an AR fifteen, and um, I know you don't own any guns. But of course, if you, boating if you tried to go and buy an AR-15 anywhere in America, um, you're, you would have to make extra effort to to find one that was sold without a 30-round magazine. Wow. That is the standard capacity. Because otherwise you can't put a 30-round magazine in it. You have to go hunt down a 20-round. You have 20 to hunt round. down a 10-round magazine. Well, that's right. I, I even just said 20-round because because the the minimal capacity magazines, the the, the so lesser capacity, original issue. are well, 20 used to be rounds. 20. Right. Used to be 20. That still doesn't allow. So you have to find a heavily modified magazine. Mem- remember, the M16 10. from the right. Vietnam War era, was they were issued with 20-round yeah. uh, disposable a- metal AR mag or M16 magazines that were yeah. just 20 rounds. Yeah. So here's a, and and the question is, are they in common use? That is what the Supreme Court mm. uh, decided in the McDonald case. And are they in common use? And in America, well, get this: an AR, the AR15 is the most sold firearm in all of America. There are about 40 million. AR-15s in, in private citizens' hands. Okay. Okay. If each one has 10, let's say only 10 mags. You do the math. There's more magazines than there are human beings in the United States. Yeah. So, is that common use? Okay. And the, now, and, and when common. I laugh when someone says I have, you know, 10 yeah, magazines. Yeah, 10 Oh, so, so you're deficient a few. That's what that means. I'm like, you know? I'm like yeah, I don't right. know how many magazines I have. By the way, the one thing you – what I did in – when the June of 2013, right before Colorado's mm, law took Colorado effect, air I, I literally um, had a document. Sign, I signed a document, gave it to an attorney, notarized it that I willed mm. my um, magazines um, 200 to one child and 200 to the other child. So, um, so yeah, and, and some of us were not that smart. We weren't, you know, a, a, oh, a firearms in the will policy before making. it happened, and so that was. I yeah, good. they. I it's a document that says they own them. And I just would like to say thank you to to Magpul uh, for doing the Colorado airdrop, which yeah. uh, all of 2012 they said Colorado residents get priority, yeah. and you could order as many. Ma- I don't know. There was probably a capacity right. you know, a limitation, but you could order as many magazines, and they would fulfill every magazine order to Colorado residents up before until the, they, before the 2013. Interesting. Uh, they so did that thank you, Magpul. We're m- still still m- fans. May of 2013. Sorry, Emma. Stickler for details. Today. So. Um, and and the, uh, but here's an in, interesting part, um, is that that not only do, not only is the AR-15 m- the most, the most commonly purchased firearm in America. It's more common than the Ford F-150, <laughs> right. which which I also have. <laughs> Ford F-150s, and I tell that to people. I said, watch, drive down the road. And watch how many Ford trucks you go by. That's there a, are ten really times good. as many as many wow. AR-15s in America than there are F-150s. There are there are four times as many AR-15s as there are Ford trucks. Wow. Yeah. So good. I need to call cut. another potty break because I gotta go pee. Cut. Um, cut. Lock, lock. You don't have to keep switching. You can catch back up to it. Well, you don't train have to, up. Yeah, switch to a new hotel room. You get back on. Oh. You go see, you know. Anyway. So, so it's, it's yeah. So anyway, she wants to use it for that. And uh, so I'm trying to get a couple other couples to go. For our 10th anniversary, we did the Virgin Islands or the. Oh, yeah, Like yeah, we yeah. went to St. Martin and Barbados and a bunch yeah. of Caribbean. And the annoying part was like every day you get off the boat at 10, you get back on the boat at 3. And you just don't really get to see, oh, like, man. all you can actually reach is the touristy places no. from the place where the riverboat yeah. stops. No. Or the 
cruise ship. Well, there's always that art on the boat. Oh, wait. Have you ever seen that, that they do art exhibits on the boat? It's just like cheesy prints, and they try and sell you like they're originals. And no, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> it sounds a little bit like the National Western Stock Show art show, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, um. Anyway, where were we? We uh, were. Um. So we pretty much covered faith pretty well. Um. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The whole I guess the uh, whole magazine thing. That's where. Well, right. and then we went shifted to politics from there. But I want to come back to politics, but only after I hear about Cindy a little bit, because we haven't given. C- yeah, Cindy, yeah, Cindy? yeah. My Cindy's uh um she's a nurse. You just said you got married in 2016. 2016. Um, she's a nurse. She's uh. Um, does she care about guns anywhere near as much? She as you? loves guns more than Dudley. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's she likes guns. Um, and uh. She likes shooting. Uh, she's a absolute sweetheart. Yeah, she's very um, uh, committed to freedom. She she loves yep. what I do, and and um, you know we we're both very social people, so we love having events. That's how we met, right, Kurt? Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, we like having people over. It's why we bought I a house. Met her even. Um, yeah. And and. And uh, it frankly, would have never moved into Fort Collins, back into Fort Collins, right. um, except that uh, we had a, a she house. She wanted to be around people again. Well, and it's there, it, and stuff. it's a house that is made for that. But, yeah. uh, but, uh, and you have a previous marriage. You have a son yeah. that you mentioned already. Yeah, I have two kids. Um, okay. My my daughter just graduated from CSU. She's twenty one. Okay. Uh, Libby's um, Libby as okay. in, is in Liberty. Yep. Uh, she's twenty one and and graduated just a few weeks ago. And, um, and then my son Ian is, uh, he's 18. He's going to be a super senior at Colorado early colleges and, and he runs, uh, runs the camera and does, um, editing for our YouTube channel. Very cool. Good kids. Sharp, sharp young guy. He's, um, along with Ben's oldest, um, he's been getting into uh, a two gun match at our private range and, um, and which I know both of us love the fact that our, yeah. Their Pass kids are shooting. Legacy, yeah. yeah, their kids are shooting, and they're actually getting good at it. And yeah, and annoyingly so, both yeah, of them. Yeah, they're competent, and they're they're safe, and mm. they know what they're doing. They're drawing their pistols, they're shooting ARs properly, yeah. and yeah. and competing, and you can just see the glow on their face from it. Uh, yeah, because it's hard, and it's a challenge, and it's fun, and you're controlling power. It's not a video game. It's not a video it, game. <laughs> I, I yeah, remember real bullets, it was but... funny, Kurt, because my son, this is many years ago, he was playing Fortnite in his you know, shooting, first-person shooting video game. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, Dad, um, there's this great gun in there, and it's called a sniper rifle. Let me show you a picture of it. And he shows me a picture of it. It's a fifty caliber semi-automatic Barrett. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And I said, have you looked downstairs in our vault? I mean, we have one. We have the real one. <laughs> it's so true. He and just it, wasn't interested up until that. And he's like, "Why?" I'm like, yeah, "He has a little bit, but right. but then and then and then he's like, but the 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 real game the gun in the game is this golden. It's called a scar. It's the golden scar. And have like, you looked in the basement? Son. Have you have you looked? <laughs> we actually have a fully automatic FN scar, and he's like, "What?" You know, so I took him out to the range. Now that's his favorite gun, and yeah, the uh, real thing is way better than the digital. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he, so now he even chuckles when he plays the game. He's like, "This is silly." Uh, yeah, it doesn't work like that. You know, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> the so, bolt, man. That yeah, eat your thumb. Yeah, that's an interesting. So, thing. so, um, and I, I enjoy that. I enjoy the fact yeah. that we have kids coming to our range, and, and not only do we teach them. You know, safety first. When you say your range, we have a private range. Ben and I own a couple other guys uh, uh, that we own um, that's private, and we're not going to talk about more. About well, it right it's now. just private can property. I, come? I can come. It's re- yeah, you yeah. with okay. with one of us. Yeah, okay. not an official range. It's private property. <laughs> you can't and we go remember, out there. But you can private go. property. We go shoot on it, and uh, yeah. um, we take a lot of our VIPs, members of Congress, legislators come mm-hmm. to town. I totally and, want to come shoot. Yeah. And, um, one thing we always do when we talk about family is ask for a one-word description of your kids. Wow. Would you like to complete that challenge, Dudley? Oh, man. Uh, it's going to take me a minute. And, Ben, you can work on it next because we didn't have this thing when you came on the first time. Wow, that's a cha- <laughs> Yeah, you one word. You popped that on me. Um, one word. Yeah, you're all polished. You don't talk about your kids much, but this is different. This is the local experience. I, I don't mind talking 
about my kids. You were just bragging about them. Um, so yeah, tell me yeah. about Ian. Ian's your younger. What's, yeah, what's he's your one word, one solo, one word description for Ian. Rock star. <laughs> cool. Um, I named him after the lead singer of three different my favorite bands from the eighties. In fact, I'm even. I realized I'm even wearing a T-shirt from one of the best band that ever existed, which is Joy what? Division. Okay, uh, they were they were the first. Like Metallica, not what I expected you, you to too. Say. Yeah, they were the first ever like like post punk uh, yeah. alternative band. Um, and uh, cool. but anyway, um, yeah, and uh, and then for uh, Libby, 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 I would um, independent. Mm. That I would just label her as independent. She's a very independent thinker. Yeah. Independent. Um, she got her own style and. I like it. Ben calls her lobster. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? I, she got a burn she one time. Pitchy. We we called her libster for a while, yeah. but then became lobster. Mm. Oh, yeah. good, good kids, man. Dudley's got good kids. Yeah. Um, Ben, how old are your kids now? And, uh, well, uh, Everett, wanna... my oldest, he just turned 13. So oh, got boy. 13, okay. 10, and 8. Uh, one word. Everett, precise. Okay. Penny, my that. middle, quirky. Or artistic, uh, one of the two. Yeah, I'll go with quirky. Whichever one she considers more of a compliment. Yeah, uh, my youngest Harvey, energetic. Nice. And I agree with all those assessments of his kids too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, I spend so. a decent amount of time around. It's all a pretty them. fun game. This one word like description it. thing. It's uh, not often. Like, found. It's amazing. You have three. You know, the, the genetically they should be right. They're right, a mix right? of me and my wife. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and and yet also different. And yet I've got three. And you can see the characteristics, you know, in my wife and, and yeah, in me, yeah. and and go, you know, it's it's fun to play that game. This is from your side of the family, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but all just, yeah, great, great kids, and uh, and Everett came, Everett started coming Everett to our little two gun yeah. match, and and hanging What's a two gun match. Ah, uh, we just pistol, pistol and airs. Okay. And and then we So you'll be able to shoot close and shoot far kinda yeah. as the notion. We set up real world scenarios, try and fun scenarios like shoot the bad guys, don't shoot the good people, right. stuff like that. We did a Elijah Dickens drill, which was the shooter in Indiana this oh, summer. Okay. I mean, we shot it at the mall. Yep, yep. We set that up so you're trying to emulate that. We did a Kyle Rittenhouse version. Um where where the the bad guy had a skateboard in his hands. Right. And a pedophile. Um <laughs> and and um, of, course. of course, we did. When Kyle came here, we did not. We did not ask him to shoot that course. That's He'd already shot that course. He got an A on that one. PTSD <laughs> for him, probably. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, um, and so, we kind of set up fun course. We did a World War Two uh, like D Day version one, yeah. where you had to come and toss a fake grenade and and you know just we did fun. One of them we did edged weapons where you. We set up melons and and like bad guys, and you had to Whoa. start the and with a Knife edged weapon, which was which was like tactical tomahawks, katanas, yeah. um, like literally Japanese katana. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, um, slice, trenching tool. slice the melon, throw a grenade through a hole, and then pick up your gun and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, shoot a bad guy. You just try and make it, and yeah, and then of course you're trying to add in some speed, and have to have um, uh, magazines uh, reloaded and. And the idea is to build skills and and provide some stress to it, yeah. especially when you have the shot timer because well, we do it professionally and we run know. a shot timer and so you and, zap them if they go too far. But, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Throw that. a baseball. So out. and of course, and you DQ'd if you screw up. <laughs> if you get your, you know, if you can't break the one eighty barrier and point your gun backward, or you're done. Hmm. So which is true in competitive shooting. One thing, Dudley, I wanted to ask is, like, political base. I'm going to shift back to politics a little yeah. bit, but been there. But, like, if the people that want to take all your gun rights away were successful next year, like, contrast— Talking about state or federal? Federal. Both. Okay. Both. Like, contrast that nation 20 years from now with the— if you win all the— efforts that you're doing well like, I, what's the difference in the world does it yeah. really matter like yeah. australia is still pretty cool they don't have any guns uk yeah right? they shut yeah. down everybody and put them in concentration camps during covid yeah go is look it, up the videos yeah i know yeah oh so that's why i i think <laughs> i think the the i was there in 97 when they were 
taking people's gun rights away. Oh, yeah. I actually lived there for about six months. Really? Yeah, they were, you know, uh, it's, it's you only fine. need guns for hunting purposes fine. and stuff. And you fast forward 25 years and you see that they're they're putting people in, in what I would call a concentration camp and, and you know, pulling them from their homes and, and putting them in, in these areas because you have a sickness you have a you have a virus, and we won't we don't need to get into, you know, the whole COVID thing. But but the point is, is that if the government decides that it wants to do something, well, I think you get, whether we get with it or not. I mean, I hate to say it, but COVID thing is a big example of what the power of government. I think that's is. why you saw liberals going out and buying guns in droves <laughs> in twenty twenty. Right. More power to you. liberals go out and buy more guns. Right here. Yeah. This is, this is so why is America safer with more guns? I guess that's my question. Well, I think the we leave each other alone. Yeah, a, it, an armed society is a polite society. I think you're you're if you if you think through the implications of of the psyche of Americans when they stop being these independent types, um, say entrepreneurs, but but people who say I'll go out and shoot my own meal, mm. and um. And that's who we were. And yeah. once we've given up that world, we become British. I don't know. I'll go get, I mean, I'll get we my paycheck style. No, I mean it's so bad. Right. If you go into you many, go up to the lunch counter basically and take whatever they give you. It's soylent I'll, green is people. Well, and I I take it. You know, <laughs> yeah, all, all fairness to Dudley, I take it a step further. If if um if I decide to be disrespectful to a you know a two hundred eighty five pound you know man who's built like the rock. Right. I'm probably going to get punched, and it's going to be a punch that's probably going to put me in the hospital. And so there's this um, there's this natural tendency to be respectful of the individual who looks like the Rock when when you're me, you know, right. 175 pound Ben who's you're five nine. Buff, though you got bigger right? muscles than I do. And, 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 and yeah, well, yes, and thank you. And still, the Rock would would destroy me, right? Easy. And so yeah, um, with two little fingers. Yeah. yeah, and and so you see this in business when somebody has more money than you, you're going to be able, you know, you're going to be hesitant to um to tick them off because they could probably sue you a little bit more, mm. right? They they could take it a little mm-hmm. bit further. Um and and you see this. And so to Dudley's point, uh, uh an armed society is a polite society when you know that somebody can escalate to the point of of the ultimate outcome, the the ultimate defense uh which which is your life, you, you tend to tread lightly Mm. and um and i can take that even into a a religious standpoint the idea of of the fear of god right it's not just just scare it's it's awe and respect of somebody who can instantaneously do this to me that that's part of it and so and so you you tread in a way of of with a mighty respect of this for the other for the other game of poker can instantly squash you but but chooses not to Mm. and so that's the surrender thing right and so when the choice not to squash you happens a respect happens and and a respect that that you carry for many many years and you say you know what that man that that man showed me um a, a dignity or a respect or um showed me grace and and at excuse me at at a moment, they didn't have to, and that he absolutely could have squashed me. I'm going to defend that man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to hold that man in, in high regards. Dude, I'm sure you and I could both trade some stories offline about businesses or business transactions that we had where where somebody um, who was very powerful both took advantage of a situation or who did the honorable thing. And yeah. for me, oh, yeah. those yeah. men that did some incredibly honorable things when no one else was looking and when they could have squashed me, I hold them in, in dear regard yeah. to this day going forward. And some of them know it and some of them will never know. I, I don't know where this came from. It's a it's a political figure. Maybe you guys remember, but instead of, we always hear the, the might makes right, but there was somebody that used the term right makes might. Mm-hmm. Do you know that Dudley? It oh, was a I don't it, it was an American political figure, I think a president mm-hmm. even. Mm-hmm. Um but it was like honestly, like that's what I hear you clucking a lot big chicken over there Ben is yeah. is that being right is powerful. And Dudley, I think that you would resonate with that as well. Yeah, uh, he put it well. I also think and let, let me get concrete. I, I don't know how much you know about the Warsaw ghetto uprising. Um that much. Okay. I'm an inch deep and a mile wide. And that's yeah. the same category. So so 20 of the essentially prison camp 
um, Jews who were put in in the Warsaw Ghetto yep. decided, and they were all from different factions of life, and none of them were soldiers or police officers right. or anything with any experience, uh, decided they were going to try and acquire firearms, which they were denied both in Germany and in Poland as uh, individuals. Anybody who actually owned those fire, any kind of firearms were usually because of bureaucratic incompetence and and they ended up holding off a battal an entire battalion of of german soldiers mm. um for almost a month and a half whoa really and and in the warsaw they were already captive right and they because they decided okay let's go get acquire one firearm and figure out how to use it none of them knew how right they were violinists and doctors, and right. and then they acquired. Well, I read Bonhoeffer, and so I'm okay. thinking about that. Oh, book. Dietrich Bonhoeffer stuff is very Ugh. empowering. But but then they acquired one Convicting. firearm, and then used that to acquire another, another, and they ended up with I think seven guns, and they would trade them around, and and then and <laughs> go in the sewers. The reason I bring that up is because is because it's very difficult to oppress an armed even slightly armed to society, much yeah. less a society that's really armed. And I don't care whether you're f very far right or very far left. Now, yeah, if you don't want to be oppressed, yeah, more guns for you. That brings up the question, what about the people who vote for their own oppression? Right. I, I, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there are a lot yeah, of people yeah, that words, vote for their own oppression these days. Um, yeah. And, and I, you know, do we do Americans just blindly go, OK, well, I guess they voted for it. Right. And again, that's we're a constitutional republic. Right. So I guess we got to trust these idiots ish yeah. or something. Um, tell me what <laughs> what you think when I say what is the right amount of restrictions to place on gun ownership? Um. Well, the 1934 National Firearms Act was challenged by the Miller case in, in 1935, and they defined it as the firearm that average infantrymen can carry. Okay. That's a small arm. So that is what the so second saw? amendment applies. <laughs> yeah. M16, M4. So anything that's normal. So a tank or a no, an average a a mounted sm a small thing, arm that an average infantryman. So that's carries. not a right necessarily. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I own um, through through a dealership through a machine gun dealership. I own belt fed machine guns, and amazingly, none of mine have ever killed anyone. <laughs> right. Um, so well, and if and if and if they have through via you, then you should be. You know, then you should be tried. I think that's also yeah. what it goes back to. If if you commit a crime, you should pay for them. Yeah, right. Fair it, enough. Again, this is not the minority report. Well, it's, it could potentially commit the, crimes. I, we're going to take. So it we had a now. loco think tank uh, holiday party at the Liberty Firearms some years ago. I don't know if you know about this. But oh yes, uh, twenty eight. Thank you, Schmeckley family. Was. Shout out. And uh, what we a few people like I didn't because I was like I'm too poor to sponsor <laughs> it's that. It's expensive. But yeah. If you guys want to shoot the machine gun. You go ahead and give them your hundred bucks or whatever for yeah, that, ten yeah, seconds. Yeah, Gatling gun. Yeah, that was thing was. Is that one of yours, or you have one like that? The I don't have a Gatling gun, but no. I don't know what I don't know what gun you rented. Yeah, um, it's, it's that golden. They've got two. Yeah. Of them. it's a Colt, and it's a it's a forty five seventy. Yeah, yeah. Crank. Gatling yeah, the crank. Gun. Yeah. Anyway, no, well, that's a piece of crap compared to what you got. <laughs> no, I mean they they have a lot of good fun. farms. That's a pretty special thing. <laughs> the Schmeckley yeah, was pretty cool. Now Ben doesn't say that, but I can say this: the Schmeckley family doesn't give money into politics. Oh, really? So yeah, they're not doing anything to defend our rights right now. Time Sorry. for you to step up, Schmeckleys. And, well, I mean. Uh, I mean, it's time. And it's time whatever. for every gun shop gun owner to do it, or shut your pie hole. Because if we you don't win these you cases, get. you get what you get. Um, yeah. You know, and I and I can I, I can step in. I, I you know, Schmeckley's are friends of mine, and you know, and even the, the obviously my own you know company, uh, you know, friends of mine. And it's it's difficult in, in anything in life. You just particularly for business owners, you get so. Um, tied into the day to the daily grind. Like I'm, I'm yeah. looking to make payroll. Right. I have to make sure that my insurance is covered. I have to make sure that that I don't have any HR issues. Right. And, and am I doing something now? Like, yeah. there's a few people that have asked me, "Do I really want to have Dudley Brown on my podcast?" Yeah. And so I think, <laughs> no. I think about, uh, you know, I, 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 if 
once brought to your attention, if you intentionally choose to, to, you know, kind of subvert or, or, or push aside those, those, these firearms issues. Yeah. Then I'll, then I'll call you out. And I think that's a challenge. I don't, for me, I don't hold it against the guys or they're the, the conservatives that are sitting there trying to run their business right. day to day. 100%. And, and you know, it's like, you know, why don't we have any good politicians? You want to good business owners that are politicians because they're out running their business. <laughs> like the busy. people that I would love to have run this com- country in the state are too busy doing good work and well, making and it, payroll. It used to be a give back kind of to the nation. Like if you achieved the kind of success, you would serve almost like my facilitators for local think tank. Yeah. You know, they don't get paid much to manage a group, but it's almost, it's, it's a give back and a, Right. And a, and a yeah. Pur- right. Purposeful and so for the, but now there's all these attacks. And if you're a conservative, you get attacked by, by the other side and vice versa. Uh, yeah. If you don't give, then you must not care. Well, and, if you, dig, and if you do give, and then if how gonna, dare you? But they're going to dig your whole political thing right. out from underneath right. you. And, all I'm tell people is that, that right now, if you're in the firearms industry and you you're should. not being a part of it, um, just get shut your pie it. hole. Because yeah. you got no reason to complain fair. when they come when they literally make it illegal for you, for your business to I, operate. I, I yeah. think that's totally totally valid. You know, I like agree. like listen, man, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna get involved, just just don't be you know don't be surprised when your rights get taken away from you. And so, yeah. um, you know, yeah, the the carry G guys have been really good. You know, we, we try and support Dudley both, uh, yeah. you know, um, off the balance sheet, if you will, um, and on, and, uh, and, I, and I'm grateful for that. I think there's there's also some guys that that unfortunately they have been you know uh, uh kind of attacked by the quote woke mob or, yeah. or doxed or something and they go I just I want to make payroll I'm out. I want to I want to make payroll or Ben what about Daniel's defense I mean this is a company that makes some of the best AR-15s in the country oh, and man. and they have sold out multiple times and and to the to the leftists in congress wow. and, and now that you know somebody did a stupid thing with one of their rifles mm. now they're taking a stand and 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 i agree with the position that that they're taking like listen you know what it's a uh it's a criminal who decided to do a criminal act yeah with with an object, yeah, it we're not suing Corvette because somebody yeah. drove their car an, off into an, an, into a crowd. <laughs> inanimate object, it means nothing. It it we we right. need to make sure yeah. that we are attacking criminals, not not just companies who make. An, so what about crazy object. people? Can crazy people have guns? Is that well, okay? technically, under current law, um, if you've been committed to a mental institution, as long as you have a, a your day in court, um, in actual court. Um. Yeah, you should be uh, have your Second Amendment rights removed. You should also have your driving privileges removed. Frankly, you should probably your not. Rights. Yeah, voting rights. You should probably not be in the general so public as a felon. Basically, if you well, it's not. I mean, you might not have committed a felony. What but if I'm you're, just a little crazy? I was thinking about shooting my ex-wife. Well, that's the challenge. Not. Define that, and that's right. that's some and of the challenge the with decider, the red, right? some of these red yeah. flag laws and stuff like that. Is you know, I decide I don't like Dudley. He's my neighbor, and he doesn't cut his grass. And you know, he's just a uh, he's just right. a jerk. And he's I've a blowhard. Heard him talk about guns before. Yeah, so I know he's trouble. So right. I call in, and you know, yeah, hey, that, red that Dudley, he's he's crazy. Yeah, that, the guy's been saying crazy. He's things. been wearing his tinfoil hat since the beginning of the pandemic. And so you know, so so who who gets to come in and and figure out whether that's legitimate or not? And and some of these some of these legislative you know laws these laws that are coming out or they're being proposed it's like oh well he can have his rights taken away and not even know why right that's a real yeah. challenge yeah you shouldn't so, have to know who told so on if him. i'm going to if i'm going to error on the side of accidentally taking everybody's rights away or taking away the rights of somebody who who does not deserve to have them taken away i'm going to error on on the side of making sure that dudley has his his day in court yeah. And that he doesn't have his rights taken away. As long as it's court adjudicated, um, that's one thing. Then you have your day in court. You can, um, and the that's, courts don't do what legit. they used to. Usually, it's bureaucracies these days. I mean, right? That's a whole other issue. A, the organization for gun ownership privileges. We're for the. We are for the rule of law. <laughs> right. You know, fair. Um, we have a final section, and I'm going to get you guys out of here. Uh, Dudley, you can start if you'd like, um, or. 
fan either way. Better me. Better you. You got to yeah. roll. So it's the local experience. It's the craziest experience of your lifetime that you're willing to share in a public audience and uh, what you learned. The craziest. It could be a week, a moment, an uh, instant. Um, a crazy experience that you learned from in business. In uh, yeah. I, I mean, I already told you kind of a weird one with yeah. the King of Spain. Um, but the uh, probably the weirdest the uh, oddest one was when I accidentally got elected to the 2012 National Convention in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> and to be like a like a delegate or whatever. I was a I, I was a delegate. I helped select the 37 delegates from Colorado, which I did in 2016 as well. Um, and because um, my organization used to get deeply involved in that, I can't imagine we're ever going to do that again. And I and I went there and I got elected to what I thought was a sleepy kind of committee, um, well, the rules committee. And I went down there. You had to go a week before, in advance. I went down to Tampa, I sat down in the committee room, and I realized, wow, there's like John Sununu, if you remember his name. He's yeah. um, yeah, from New Hampshire. He used to be White chief House of chief of staff. staff. Yeah, for Bush, and, too. And Bush. And, um, and there were, I don't know, probably a third of the of the 100 people there were uh, – were members of Congress or former right. members of Congress. <laughs> You're like, and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, why are all these people on this rules committee? And then I realized it was because it was, it was, the rules. It was during the. <laughs> no, it had always been the sleepy committee, but it was um, during the Mitt Romney era, mm. and and they were all very fearful of one person, and they wanted to fix the rules for the committee so that in the future it would be very difficult for him to get the nomination. That was Rand Paul. Oh, um, yeah. and at that time, Rand Paul was this upstart that they right. thought was going to um, come in and uh, upset the whole establishment uh, of the Republican right. Party. And of course, I was a very close. I'm a close friend of Rand's. And oh, cool. And tell uh, him hi. If he ever comes to Colorado, I'd love to have him on the podcast. Viva Rand. Because cool. I well, because I came up with my when in this time of the Old Town Tuesdays. I had basically developed my political views on how things should be. And then, like, six months later, Ron Paul comes around and I'm like, yeah, yeah, what he said. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, in 2012, I was a Ron Paul delegate. Right. Um, well, in 2008 was when this first happened for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and and uh, it was very ugly. Uh, the Rules Committee fight, I ended up fighting with, uh, um, I don't know, long, long stories. But... Um, but uh, they tried to sneak it in um, and hide uh, some of the main leaders on our side who were trying to stop these rules. Mm. And in fact, the day of the convention, if you recall, there was a yeah. there was a a, a big um, hurricane coming into um, oh, right. into Tampa. And uh, I remember Scott Renfro and I were um, body surfing the day that that <laughs> came in because the the they were very big waves. But anyway, the convention happened and and they tried to. A convene the rules committee in advance of a number of our people showing up and uh i remember a young man a young guy from uh attorney from massachusetts what had a had our minority report in his hand i turned around he had a minority report in our in his hand and he was forearming this old lady who was trying to, she was saying give me that back give me that back and i found out this lady was a, a state senator from north dakota <laughs> margaret city okay and he was forearming her and, like, and me, smiling lady. and he no no it was he had stolen it from her. Oh. And he ripped it out of her hand and he was looking at all the Romney people who were the sergeant in arms and smiling like, gee, look what I did for our side. And I'm like, You're stealing something from a little old lady. And and I grabbed the hold of him and I guess I threw him three rows. <laughs> You're like- um and he crashed you in. Delete this, you know. Yeah, yeah. He, assault. He crashed into uh, uh, the you know fold up chair. I like, mean, you threw him gently into no, the yeah, folding. No, no, I threw him. No, just him. And um, I literally <laughs> picked, fervor. I literally. I'm a hockey player. I literally picked the guy up and threw him, and uh, and I call it a dwarf toss, and <laughs> um, and uh, and he's like screaming, assault, assault. <laughs> That's like, you, safe. And. Uh, and it turned out he was, yeah, he was trying to stop our minority report, which it ended wow. up being John Boehner who actually stopped our minority oh. report on the floor. That was a funny story. That's one comes to mind in, in politics and the very rare occasion in which people tried to get physical actually with you. And I'm active. like, yeah, screw you. Um, mm. And, you know, okay. So it is. 
Yeah. I don't know. I guess, I guess I got known for that and got known for... That was lead. part of what launched you into notoriety? Kind well, of. I, le- I led a walk out of, of uh, the 2016 convention against Trump. Um, oh, really? The Colorado delegation. Oh, yeah, Yeah, which had... Um, Roger Stone actually said he was going to send... He told a reporter who called me, a Wall Street Journal reporter, called me up and said, uh, Roger Stone says he's going to send his thugs, pipe-wielding thugs, to your hotel tonight <laughs> for w- your walkout. And I said, give that bastard my room number, will you? And <laughs> I'm like, I'm a gun lobbyist. What are you going to do? <laughs> right. Send Threaten in. me, old Send twit. it in, bitches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bring it on. Get, pick a number, who dude. You want a piece cares? of paper? Pick a number. Uh, yeah. All right, Ben. You're up. Yeah. Your local experience. Oh, man. Oh, Dudley, we can let you go. I have to go. Appreciate no, you being here. See you, man. Um, any, oh, hey, where can people find you? Huh? Take the take the rest of the tailor? Is that you? Can yes, the take the, the EH tailor? tailor, my friend. Why? He's giving it to I you. To say thanks for being on my buddy I'm Kurt's podcast. What? This is, you, I'm paying, you're paying me for being on his podcast? There, there you go. paying his. Well, share it abundantly. Get us some well, new followers right and stuff. Anyway. See you, brother. good. See you, man. Thanks, Dudley. Yeah, my uh, my local experience. Uh, yeah, your uh, crazy experience. Man, I I don't live a crazy life. Uh, you are a fairly you... conservative guy. Yeah, man. Um, Which means it's so crazy for you to be on here with Dudley on this. Show. Yeah, yeah, he's the, he's the craziest thing that's happened to me. Uh, you know, I would just say the pandemic uh, in mm. general. Yeah. And uh, in this moment of of operating these these two companies, um, yeah, or, or or being involved. Well, plus yeah. you were an oil field company that. Saw the price go to zero at the time. Yeah, you, you I will never you forget. At you know, that time. it was yeah, it was um, you know, the pandemic really kind of started for us. So I recall it was March twenty first, if I recall. I think it was a Monday after. Um, I think it was WTI dropped to sixteen to eighteen dollars over right. the weekend, or or right, <laughs> right. Uh, late on Sunday, if I remember. The markets had had opened up already, and so. That Monday, I remember we had hired a few guys that were supposed to start on that Monday. I think it was March 21st. And um, and it looked like the world was starting to shut down. And right. My wife calling you're saying, like, hey, they're thinking about- Should I really hire these yeah, people? Yeah, shutting, you know, shutting the schools and, for a couple of weeks. And you're the, the, the freaking CFO, right? Like, yeah. Effectively. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I, you know, again, good good perspective. We, you know, I've got, a, I've got partners in each of these companies. So, so you know- uh, accumulatively, we're making these decisions, and and so it's not just you know in a vacuum, you know, by myself, but but we're looking at all these these issues, and and um, on the oil and gas side, yeah, it drops uh, from March twenty first until April twentieth. It was April twentieth, twenty twenty. I will never forget. And Cameron and I are we went to Chick fil A to drown our sorrows in some some chicken nuggets yeah uh as we watched and the stop the the oil prices went from you know and they, and they go to 10 and they go to eight and they go to six and we're watching it in real time and it gets to two and cameron looks at me and and cameron has always been kind of like the oil whisperer he I, I always would ask him like hey where's oil gonna be in a month and he was just he was just always on he just had this you know this, this ability to to consider you know what was going on and um and he goes Oh my gosh! I guess it can go to zero. That's what he told me, and it was about two dollars at the time. And it hits, you know, close to zero, and then it says negative four dollars. <laughs> right. And you know, we have this app, and we're we're refreshing it, and it says negative six dollars. It says negative eight dollars, and and we 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 being a you know Cameron and I and and, and Brad and Casey and a couple of guys, if we you just had some major like storage solutions for oil. Oh my around, gosh! You yeah. Made a of oh, money. it was amazing, and we walk outside, and we ended up we were. It was it was April. It was sunny outside, and we had nothing that we could do. Our you know so our customers had shut down, and we just started washing Cameron's car. It just it made uh, you know you're just, you're just silent, <laughs> and um and Cameron and I got in his car and we drove to Chick Fil A and ate some chicken nuggets and we and we pulled this thing up and I will never get and it got down to was it negative thirty eight dollars? Yeah. I have a, I have a I screenshot of it. Yeah, whatever. something. And just in silence, we're just sitting there going like, "Well, there it is. That's the end of the world," <laughs> you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. If the world no longer wants to pay for oil, but actually needs to pay to get rid of it, dude, it the was whole just thing is messed up. Yeah, and, yeah, and 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 not only was our business at the time largely affected by the direct cost of oil, but of course everybody's business is direct is, is yeah. you know impacted by the indirect cost of oil, and and um, 
And so there's these, you know, second and third order effects. And yet, um, so we applied for PPP, as most companies did. And we followed it to the T, and we hired guys back, and we paid them to, you know, to clean the floors and, and paint equipment. You know, we, we complied to, to the nth degree of, of the spirit of that, that entire transaction. And, um, and, I, and I feel good about that. You know, I, I, but um, it, was very, it was very interesting because I, I juxtaposed that with, um, with Kinetic Research Group, which I'm also involved with. And I got partners yeah. over there and we're yeah. considering all these things going on. And so we applied for PPP at NG. And so I said, hey, guys, we need to apply on the KRG side. I said, we need to apply for PPP just in case. And I applied for PPP, and um, and then as NG, the the oil and gas company, starts seeing these you know dramatic decreases in revenue because literally our guys cannot work. Right. KRG, the gun side, them. starts picking up. Right. And so at the same time, I have you know uh, a sixty percent decrease in revenue in. In G, I have a thirty-five percent increase in revenue in KRG. Yeah, and what a, um, oh man, just this this the like dichotomy of it. Oh, this like schism and and it just you back and forth and 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 of course in G is significantly larger and so that that you know that's the one that kept me up at night making sure the guys were getting paychecks. Man, I I just. Yeah, People who vilify business owners, they 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 don't understand, or perhaps they haven't dealt with the right business owner who actually cares, who actually cares, man. And you know when when Cameron walks in my office, and he says, you know, take my salary to zero, because <laughs> you can't take it to the less than zero, you know, right? Just take it to zero. We have yeah. to make sure that we get through this. And, um, and I got guys walking to my office saying, Hey, cut my salary so that we can get through this. And, and, you know, <laughs> scrimping and saving and calling our insurance company and calling our, our, our Meanwhile, debt Meanwhile, you got like three new ads trying to hire production people for your. Yes. And then the business. gun side is going nuts. And we're, and <laughs> I tell you, and our, you know, our, our partners over there were going like, what in the world? So, um, so I ended up, I, I took a, a, we qualified for PPP money on the KRG side. It wasn't much. It's again a small company, and they deposit the money in my checking account at the same time my business takes off. Approximately two weeks later, we we paid the uh, gosh maybe it was four weeks anyway we we paid the money back to the bank a hundred percent of it on the KRG side, and the bank said we don't know what to do with this because <laughs> you're the only company who's paid the money back. Right. So I thought that was interesting as well. It just it taught me so much, man. I, I wow, that I, was a really philosophical thing. Because oh, dude, as we it could have a, out, we could have like, a podcast entirely on you, the pandemic. Like the PPP money was forgivable, right? Like it's forgivable. And now at the time, remember only like a, time, it wasn't. It wasn't forgivable. It was, it was amortized we'll over a long period of time. They didn't know. So do you regret that? Or does it make you feel more? I don't know if I'd say regret, but rather in like in hindsight, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Like if I could do it again, uh, I'd like. The selfish side of me is like, I should have fired everybody, taken all the money, put it in a checking account, and done well, nothing. you didn't need to do that. And but. you don't. No, we spent all of it on employees and making payments and making lease payments and keeping our insurance going. And 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 you understand that, like, hey, if you don't pay your insurance, it lapses. Right. And it goes away. If you don't pay your four, you know, if you don't, you know, match the 401k that you said you're going to do, it lapses and it goes away and you get fined. If you don't keep your, you know your your benefits going, it, they lapse and they go away. So it's not it's not just making the the actual payroll. It's all these these second and third yeah, order, yeah. you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, effects that can occur if if you don't keep your business sustained. Um, we didn't benefit at all. I shouldn't say like, hey, we kept the business going, which was the benefit, but we didn't financially benefit directly. From from you know this this money on on right. the NG side, I mean right. it it sustained, it sustained us. We, you. we did. You could have died otherwise. We would have died. I mean, heck, the government ran a Mack truck through the front door of our business, <laughs> basically, <laughs> and um you know it said yeah you know, shut down. Um and and then again we have uh, on the KRG side where we about seventy five percent of our business is run is direct sales on the internet. Uh, right. And boy, I mean think about that if the internet didn't exist, right, right. 
And so um, people, uh, again, another huge philosophical discussion, people sat at home and were given money. Right. And what do they do with it? They spend money on the internet. And new guns. And they're oh, and then and then the um you know uh, summer of love happens and you know people are are uh, peacefully More protesting <laughs> mostly uh, in peacefully. Portland yes mostly peacefully and uh, and they start buying guns and they start buying accessories for their firearms and so again just this weird dichotomy of hmm. of of a business that creates a lot of value that just gets you know decimated and has you know 100 employees. And this other business that creates value in 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 the way of only in a really of, niche fashion, and in, 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 yeah, very niche and and Second Amendment, and that just blows up because it's chaotic. Right. And so it's kind of like the idea of of what is it? You know, alcohol and and cigarette sales do really well at downturns. Right. Uh, so, so do guns. Yeah. Um. Well. Well. When there's the right downturn, when when it's when there's political turmoil, firearms do well. When it's just uh, inflation and people don't have as much discretionary income that's being given to them by the government. Uh, they then then that can back off. And so, so now um, as a bunch of uh, service industries uh, weren't able to take care of deteriorating infrastructure from 2020, now those businesses NG starts picking up again. Mm. And then KRG, it's doing very. It continues to do well. It continues to grow, but not nearly at the rate as when people had discretionary money. Right. Given to them by the government, and they were sitting on the couch Here's and the couldn't money. leave. Want a gun? Yeah, you know. And so, um, hmm. you know, maybe it's That's maybe an it's more of an, of an encouragement to to business owners that um, you can have the exact same thing happen to you, and on one side of the spectrum it looks rosy, and on the other side it looks like death. Yeah. And um, just hang in there. Agreed. Just hang in there. It you know, business is not. If it's, you believe in what you're doing and you believe it adds a value to the world, hang in there. Look come around. Hang in there, man. And we don't do this for a two year perspective or a five year perspective. We do this ongoing and in perpetuity, right? And um, you know, there's somebody who who once reminded me that like uh, I think it's I'm gosh, I think it's like the Japanese culture, you know. Here in the United States we think in like three to five year plans. Yeah. In Japan they have hundred year plans, yeah. you know. I don't know if that's true or not, but but it seems that way. Um, I think we need to have a little bit longer perspective. I think sometimes we we plan for what what is my year end EBITDA gonna, going to be, right? Instead of you know what is my ten year plan? What right. is my ten year? What am I going to sell to my customers in five years from now? What's my thirty year goal with this thing? You yeah. know, let's let's make a long term decision, not a short term decision. So it's probably not as uh, quite as 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 chaotic or 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 boisterous Crazy. or yeah okay you didn't it's, slide it, a motorcycle out in a race in yeah the Isle of man or yeah anything. i didn't have this come to jesus moment no it, but that's real though yeah it was the 16 that, that months is very real it absolutely impacted my life um and i take i take uh boy experience from going through a financial downturn as a banker um it seemed like uh you know it was largely us bankers that were like Oh, the world's crashing down. Up. I mean, yeah, dude, the entire you know the economy. But as bankers, we were like, oh, dude, we, right. we, we really screwed up. And to take that and go, okay, you know, um, just just have the right perspective on life. Um, I still had a marriage. I still had three kids. Um, it was more important to come home and to be balanced and to to set aside the angst and the turmoil and the challenge of the day. And to be present as a father and a husband than it was to add another zero to my bank account. Yeah. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet lose his soul? I think we talked about that before. Yeah. That, well, that, that's it. The pandemic. That's my challenge. We'll prob- probably come back to it again. I think we should. Godspeed, Ben. Yeah. Thanks, Kurt. See you, man. Thank you for listening to this episode. This is Alma Ferrer, producer of the Loco Experience podcast. If you enjoyed this program and would like to support the show, please share it with your favorite people and leave us a review. To see upcoming guests, behind-the-scenes footage, and more, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at the Loco Experience. Subscribe to never miss the latest interview, and until next time, stay loco.